Let's find an inn where I can hire a room. 51 knots. How many more? Light. How many more? How many, Perrin? How many? How many more? What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. And Perrin's got a very long piece of string. <sighs> yeah. Inquiring minds would like to know how many more. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's really the question we've been asking for the three, three or four three books. books I, yeah. it is, this plotline has been going on for so long, I don't even remember when it started me, anymore. Me, me neither. Me neither. But you know what? Let's not start with that. Let's no, because there's good it. shit in this section. No, I was going to say... Y'all... The Forsaken in the last section were like, we got to go kill Perrin and Matt. And then, like, mere chapters later. Yeah. Mere chapters later, they actually did the thing they said they were going to do. And not books later. This is so different from everything Robert Jordan does. I was actually going to say um, we should start off uh, with this beautiful um We'll get to that warmer. in a second. First, we got to say hi to Blue, who's been a member for 14 months. <laughs> Blue, welcome back to the Nerd Team. And Thank is responsible you. for, like... A uh, hundred and forty other members. Yeah. Um, Arzu Kishefapur, welcome to the Nargs to you as well. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Uh, but, and uh, Nick Roach, thank you for being a Narg. Uh, before we get into it, um, uh, just for the podcast listeners, this is chapter six through twelve of Knife of Dreams. Didn't say that oh, at the beginning, call. and uh, we should do that. Good. Some big or as Claris calls it, Knife of Daggers. It's the Knife of Daggers. Yes. It's the Knife of Daggers. Exactly. That's that's. You can't convince me otherwise. Uh, Clarus can't read. Uh, <laughs> and I have a book club. It's really fun. That's what uh, audiobooks are for, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, something we're both very good at listening to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Alec, welcome to back to the nerd table. Oh, my God. pop chat out. Oh. I can't believe we're already doing in this economy jokes. <laughs> Alec. Alec. Thank you for that one. band. Appreciate it. Hide user from channel. No. <laughs> um, before we get too far into this, uh, y'all, there's a, there's another thing I wanted to bring up. If you receive a reply to a comment on any of our videos that says, hi, come join me on Telegram, you won a prize. You did not win a prize. They're trying to scam you. I'm desperately trying to delete all of them, but they're bots. They are faster than me because they're robots. Uh, I am not a robot. I am merely flesh made into man uh, at the dawn of creation. And wow, you've so, been around a while. Uh, I'm very, very old. Yeah. Well, okay. This kind of yeah, the age gap between us is uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but teenage girls love it. Um, <laughs> I uh, Those are not us. Uh, I'm so sorry. We cannot delete them as fast as they pop up. We are trying. Please do not telegram them. Don't send them any information about you. Don't do anything like that. Yeah. Uh, when we do giveaways on this channel, we will talk about it in the videos. Uh, we will have some giveaways coming up. There might be a big giveaway coming up in the next month. Um Maybe if they the hit a thing big exists. milestone. Well, and also if the thing that we said we we're going to give away is not just a leak and is actually a real thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Don't worry about that. Don't, um, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, please be careful. Uh, yes. The, we are a channel that is somehow, I don't understand how, but somehow become large enough that scammers think it's worthwhile to troll our comments. So Yeah. Um, we made it, kids. Just be careful on the internet, as always. If, yeah. it, uh, if you ever danger. have a question, uh, my DMs on Twitter and Discord are always open. Uh, I will always uh, respond about scams. I do not want anyone to get scammed under my name. Uh, yeah. So please, 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 please be careful online. You can get scammed under my name. I don't give a shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a joke, to be clear, for uh, the purpose of comedy. La la! Thank you for joining the Nargs of the Nerd Table. Welcome to the Nerd Table. And Arazu Kashefapur gifting five memberships out. Arazu, thank you. Let's freaking go. Thank you so much. Um, Y'all, uh, there's a beanie on my head. What? We've been talking about a beanie for a year, and I never knew what you guys were talking about. And now we finally actually sell a beanie. <laughs> the first beanie yeah, we've ever sold. Definitely the first beanie that we've ever sold. The first beanie we've ever sold. Um, here, I'll take it off. My hair looks like trash, but here, I'll take it off so you can get a nice, good, <laughs> up-close look. Uh, this Narg. is the silver Narg look. Um, we had to simplify the emote down, um, color-wise. Yeah, from this. Uh, that. from this, because, uh, the threading can't do all of the details that's in the shirt version. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the beanie. Um, I actually, I wasn't sure if I was gonna love the color. 
Um, I, I really like it. I didn't actually intend for it to be public last week when it was. That was <laughs> that was my mistake. That was an accident. But um, I do love it. Uh, it's very soft beanie, very comfy. And um, yeah, I hope you all love it as much as I do. At the request of everybody, uh, it is available in all colors. So you can get it in whatever Aja color. I don't know with the black on this side how it will look on the black beanie. Uh, That's so up to you. If you, anyone gets a black beanie, uh, send us a picture because we'd love to see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a little narg beanie, um, there you go. Yeah, uh, Michael Kioski, thank you for that super chat. Everyone knows Nerdy would send us a sing singing telegram. We actually did should that. Should I start a cameo for singing telegrams? Should we did I, like, that for get Valentine's, on... remember? Yeah, but I'm like, should I do like, a, should I start a cameo account where people can like request singing telegrams for me? Go for it. 500 bucks a pop. <laughs> no, God, no. I'd do like 20. <laughs> Stephen McAvoy, uh, thank you for being an ARC for six months. Welcome back. <laughs> but I've won so many prizes. Are you going to tell me there aren't single ladies in my area next? Well, there are. There probably are, but they're not advertising. But there are online. no, but there, there's no website that will guarantee you sex with single hot MILFs in your area. Yeah. That is a um, a scam, yes. as they say. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm double narged up today. Double narged. I know. I like double it. Double narged. And it's green, too. They're both green. I like it. Thank I'm here you. for it. Thank Should've you. Should have worn my narg shirt. Would have been triple narged up. Triple narged up. <laughs> that sounds like inappropriate. Uh, I don't know. I, I would get I would get double donged by a couple nargs. Um, uh, there is only one narg, Okay. <laughs> But if there were two, they oh. could spit roast me. Wow. 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 We're starting off strong. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Mm. Anyways, beanies available. Send us a picture if you order one. Yeah. Um, so, Clarus, today we're talking about Knife of Daggers, mm -hmm. chapter 6 through 12. This was a split. Yeah. The last two chapters, pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Last two chapters, pretty great. Happy about that. <laughs> we're going to um, breeze through the first four, and then we're going to spend a lot of time talking about a certain letter that someone wrote to somebody else. What? Yeah, I know. Because, uh, goddamn, did I not need the four chapters of, we're very slowly making our way down the road. Actually, you know what? I learned a few things in those chapters that we'll get to when we get to it. But, uh, Merlin, welcome back mm -hmm. to the, or welcome to the nerd table. We appreciate it. Thanks for being an R. I, Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There was a lot of stuff this week that I did not enjoy reading. This was not my favorite week of the reading. Uh, and there's somebody in this book that is kind of that is kind of spoiling the whole thing for me, and I'm struggling with it. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, but uh, it ends strong, and it ends with uh, some action that mm -hmm. I'm excited to get into because it was exciting. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was. Yes. There, there's things going on. There's things cooking. That are, are, are a lot of fun. So, yeah, shall we get into uh, chapter seven? Chapter six. Chapter six? Or did we read six? I can't remember. Chapter six. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it is on the thumbnail. It is. Because I can't do math, so I'm just making sure. I'm just I'm just double checking. You are you are something. You are always so prepared for our show. I love I Me? one thing I love yeah. about you. Is that you're always so prepared for yes, our show. That's me. Claris prepared Polaris. Always. I hate you so much. <laughs> it's a skill I have that I, uh, you know, use daily in my life. Definitely always prepared. Um, yeah. So, why can't I find my notes? Um... <laughs> See, you're also prepared. Christian Rapper says those four chapters were actually important. Sure. I guess. I mean, the dice said they're important. I'm just, kind of. yeah. Can we, before we get into it, can we talk about the fact that Robert Jordan is really bad at writing romance? Yes. Like, just kind of like across the board is really bad. Like, the best romance it's, in the Wheel of Time. It's, it's brutal. I would argue. Uh -huh. Is um, Ruark and the two... Enemies and... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I would argue of the relationships in The Wheel of Time, that is the only one that feels I honestly... Human. Okay, I'm going to say I actually really like New Spring. Mm -hmm. That Maureen and Swan, like, clearly have a relationship, but not, like, blatantly. Like, like the, the way that they talk about one another 
is actually like a really like sweet and like healthy thing. Clarice, you cannot bring more. That, that is not romance according to the internet. People are going to be very upset. I will that upset we, that the, the bisexual internet. ladies are bisexual. I, I will They're upset the They're going to be internet so mad till the day that I die. Um, but uh, but they only had sex and said that they were beautiful and said that they loved each other. That's kissed. not gay. That's not gay. They it's not gay kissed. if you have sex with them. God damn it. Uh, Ashwell, welcome back to the nerd table. Uh, Arjun's idea of romance is two characters who are fated to be together and they just are for reasons. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Robert Jordan's idea of romance is that a man finds out he's fated to be with a woman yes. and so he bends over backwards towards her even though she there's no give and take. Yeah. And like my the, the big problem with the two on Matt relationship and we're going to talk about it throughout uh, the mm -hmm. reading today is that there is no reciprocation from her. It no. is just Matt being a lapdog for her and putting up with all of her the all of her worst qualities, despite the fact that at no point does she give him any ground. No, no, no. And so it's just it's so toxic <laughs> and gross. Yeah. Beyond the fact that she's a slaver, which makes it that much worse. Which is right? worse, yeah. And yeah. like it is it's bad for that reason as well. But yeah. But the I would buy into the uh, relationship between them more if the only thing Tuan brought to the relationship wasn't she has big, pretty eyes and I like when she smiles. Yeah. And that is the extent <laughs> of what Matt likes about her. Yes, yes. Right? Like, she's awful to him. Um, uh, Glimmer, I want to say welcome to the nerd table. We got so many nargs in the chat today. Um, and Philip also says Randon men are decent, which I was going to bring up. I do think that they're pretty good. I think that like Min is very good for Rand. I, but I, 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 I don't know if I don't know if Rand is good for Min. I, I like them once they're together. Yeah. I think the courtship between them never made sense. No. Like like Robert Jordan skips the step where people fall in love and they just see each other and are in love because it's so much easier than showing the like process of getting there. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that's that that I mean, I will I will attest is hard to write. You know, I'm I'm not gonna like that is a very human experience that is unique to every individual. But the problem is when your book series nothing. has this many characters in romance and yeah. there's it's there's no out. courtship really. Like the courtship is Fail punched Perrin and then he spanked her and then they were mad at each other until they were married. Um, yes. Matt is fated to be with Tuan. Yes. Rand had sex with Min and then didn't want to speak with her because he thought that he raped her until she convinces him that it wasn't rape and now they're happy. Like, the, the way that these people fall into their relationships yeah. are so bizarre. I mean, Rand literally fell out of a tree in front of Elaine. And she's like, ah, hot. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> which, you know, like, I don't know, could be cute, but they then they spend, like, then they are not together forever until they come back together and she writes confusing letters to him that are like, I hate you, but I love you, like, kind of She vibe. writes him two different letters, he's confused, and then he shows up and they're bonded forever. I know! And, and like, the Elaine, but the Elaine Avienda uh, Rand stuff is, is another part that's, like, weird because Avienda makes more sense. They at least spend time together. But yes. Elaine and Rand are in love They've never seen each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just, they're like head over heels in love because Avienda keeps explaining what Rand's thighs look like to Elaine. And there's just a point where Elaine is like, you know what? I've been picturing these thighs in my head for like six months. I'm going to marry that man. I yeah. haven't even seen him in those six months, but my my Them lady love thighs. over here has been describing them to me while we take baths together. And I'm so horny for those calves now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's all about the legs, you know? Yeah. I no, you yeah. know what? You know what? I will I will agree. I think Nynaeve and Lan Nynaeve and Lan actually really work for me. They, they might be the relationship that is the best built. From start to finish. They both do things for here and here's what works about Nynaeve and Lan and why I really like them as a couple. Uh-huh. Before they get together, they're very attracted to each other. Yes. They don't say it right away, but they do things for each other. They show up for one another. Yeah, and they're also, like, they, you know, especially Nynaeve has to deal with her feelings about the whole Moraine of it all. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, he's hot, but it's like, ooh, but there's this there's this weird barrier in between us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and so it's uncomfortable. And so, yeah, I, I think that that, like, they have a really interesting arc um, that's, that's, like, well laid out. Yeah, the romance is kind of, like... 
I don't want to say like 50 50. I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt, but like sometimes it's really bad. And but, then there's a few times that it works. But then, like, even in the Nynaeve Land romance, which I actually do think is well done, right? Yeah. For the most part. Um, Nynaeve is a pain in the ass, but pain in the ass is get married too. He skips over the wedding. I know. He, like, that happens off page in a way that I'm like, why would so you does skip? The, the only Rude. part, the only part of their wedding day that we see is when she spins around before he can come on her from behind, oh my God. which usually takes place after the wedding. Usually, yeah, yeah, so that he can come on her front. But oh my God. Robert like, Jordan just doesn't like to write weddings. I guess he's like, yeah, people are just married. <laughs> see, Sarmi says uh, Avienda and Elaine are also quite a good love story. I agree with that. Yes, Avienda and Elaine. Yes. That 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 I can get behind. But but this section really like the Matt and Tuan relationship is 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 rough. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it drags Matt down for me. Yes. Because you know, as much as we, uh, Matt went through a whole situation with Tylen. Yes. That was interesting. It, hard to read and like awful. But uh, there, there was a relationship dynamic there with nobility and a commoner and, and like, what power do you have in that situation? Yes. That was at least interesting to read. Yeah. It went on maybe a little bit longer than I would have liked yeah. and was a little bit, it played for laughs more often than I liked. Yeah. But But there were elements of it that I understood. Mm-hmm. And then Matt got out of that. And I was hoping that Matt getting out of that would either show growth for him or or give him an opportunity to live this life outside of having his agency taken away from him. Yes. But instead of that, instead of him moving forward as a character, he went from a situation where this monarch has taken his agency away yeah. to this prophecy has taken his agency away. Yes. And it's still like a monarch in a sense. Like Tuan is the leader of a country. and But he's only with her because of like, like she is not taking his agency away in this. It is his slavish devotion to this prophecy that has removed his agency in the situation yeah. and is making him behave in a way that I don't think is true to his character and because she is has hard a pretty to read. smile. Like yeah. yeah. And and honestly yeah. like is is hard to read at times. Uh yeah. And it's just it's interesting cuz I this is a character who when he came back from the wall falling on him. We missed him for a book. Yeah. And he came back and I was like, "Oh my god, it's so good to have Matt back." I remember that book club. Yes. Yes, we're like, "Matt, thank God." Um, but uh Topher, thank you for that super chat. Elena and Avienda make more sense as a couple than almost legit every couple in the series. Yes. 95% sure they'll be an actual couple in the show. I mean, I think that the polyamorous foursome is just going to be very openly polyamorous. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the show is going to lean into that. That like they they've already leaned hard into cer- some of those aspects of mm-hmm. the series, um, so I, I would not be surprised. And honestly, I'd I'd be happy for it. I, I think it totally makes sense with the yeah. time that they spend together, how how they view one another. Like you know, like the first sister ceremony is like very gay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no, I don't think it is. Re- like the, I don't no, find the way it that they erotic talk about, at all. No, no, sorry. The way that they talk about one another, I guess uh, the. Like gay, the gay love, not like the gay sex part of it. Like the 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 they it feels romantic in certain aspects. How they see one another, how they talk about one another, and how they view one another. I I would argue that that is one of the few times that it doesn't feel like um, romantic in a like uh, lover way. That is one of the few times okay. when that that is love. That is a different kind of love that comes through for me. There, I did not feel like that was. Um, that, like, they were going to go back to the rooms and have sex later. I had the feeling that they were right. going to go hold each other all night, right? Yeah, which is kind of... and Because like, I, I do think there are probably first sisters who aren't. Yes, I'm sure I'm sure you know that there I mean? are. Um, I, Ar- Arizu makes a good point. It kind of feels like a wedding, which is kind of how I felt about it. The similar things of mm-hmm, not exactly yeah. vows, but I just got that vibe from it. Not, not that they were, like, super horny for each other and we're going to go, like, bone down. But yeah. it, it felt, like, special in that way. And the way that. that they like talked about one another, but I I, I see what you're saying. It's I, I I hope that I hope that their relationship is like a, a corner point for the for the show. Mm-hmm. It is it is something that I do really love about the series. Yeah, yeah. no, agreed. Um, what I was saying about Matt though. Yes. Um, Sorry. Uh, when the book club where I was so excited Matt was back because I, I felt like Robert Jordan wrote him really well and he was mm-hmm. an interesting character in the series. I, I'm I'm sad to say that now I kind of dread Matt chapters because he, since leaving since they fled the Sanchin, mm-hmm. there's been no goal. Like the goal has just been keep moving away from the Sanchin because we have um, 
uh, two on with us, mm-hmm. and because we need to escape them. But but there's no motivation for these characters right now. They are just kind of like slowly going down the road with the circus. Yeah. And it, it, it's been so long of that that this plot line, in, until the very end of this, where like the, the more rain letter gets read and then the fight in the street, that it is so unmotivated that it, it it was genuinely like the first five chapters this week were really hard to get through. And last week I had no problem. I flew through the reading last week. I didn't put the book down. And then this week, like, I was constantly putting the book down because I just find the lethargic way that Robert Jordan has written this Mm storyline to be really, like, unfortunate. Um, I I, I don't think it does a benefit to any of the characters. Yeah. And the the Tuan's motivation in spending time with Matt is still so unclear to me that... I, I, I don't know. I, I this this week was honestly a struggle. Yeah. Uh, until the end. And then the last three chapters I like burned through because I was like, oh shit, like these characters are doing things and they have goals and they want something. And like w- once those once those little tinders are, are lit under our characters, Robert Jordan writes them really well. Yeah. He just has this tendency to like write hundreds of pages about the in-between moments of characters just getting places. Yeah. And I, I, I don't, at this point in the series, I don't understand why he's still doing that. There, there's no world to be built. Like, the, 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 the descriptions at this point are just, like, they're, they're so fuzzy because everything is so over-described. Yeah, yeah. That, like, you can't you remember You can't all of remember it. everything. Yeah. And that, that's why it feels a bit languid. Like, it's, there, there's some important stuff that happens, right? You know, like, uh, <clears throat> g- giving the horse to Tuan obviously is an important moment. The, like, ghost village disappearing is important. And then the last two chapters are important. <laughs> and that that's kind of really... I mean, I guess Aguinan and, and um, uh, Bale getting married is important, even though it doesn't affect much narratively. Yeah, yeah. They just, you know, have, like been promised one another like you know and that's that's for like them but we don't even get that from their perspective or anything like that it's just kind of like oh they went off and got married hey congrats like yeah and even the 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 action that we do see in these chapters is not a result of their actions it is a result of them happening upon other people's actions yeah yeah i do one thing that um that i do like is that again agreeing to marry bail doman Mm-hmm. is definitely a big step for her character as well as, like, um, her, like, almost apology to Amethera. Yeah. Like, her, her, her di- different treatment 100%, of 100%, but why was that chapter from Matt's POV? I, I don't know. You know I, what I yes. mean? Like, We've had Agian <clears throat> in POV before. Give give us that again. You and know? The, the POV where we first learned that Agian would never marry Bale Doman because he, she saw him as property... Yeah, I want to know what went on in her head to change that. And th- and this is the thing where it's like the most interesting part of this whole week's reading, mm-hmm. honestly, is again in changing her mind. Yeah. And we don't and we, just it, saw, it from we the saw outside. It, but we we saw it after it happened. Yeah. And I was like, why why would you the the most like motivated moment of this whole week mm-hmm. is again in having this titanic shift in her personality from I will never marry this man who I own. To, of course I'm going to marry him. It was so stupid that I never thought I would. And for that to happen off page yeah. is it, much like Nynaeve and Land's wedding. It's like, why would you, why wouldn't you show that? Yeah. But you'll, but you'll happily show like Matt going to buy a horse. Which, like, like, uh, like a zebra, but, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a zebra. It is a zebra. It's got equal black and white stripes down it. It's a zebra. Are they stripes? Yeah, it's got equal parts black and white stripes down the whole thing. That's why it's it's it looks like a horse, but it's a zebra. But zebras don't look like horses. They've got different manes. I mean, barely. There are there are horses that have manes that look I, like zebras. I thought it was like splotches, but it the, it was called a razor because the distinction between the colors was so. No, no, it's like stripes. It's it's a zebra. It's not a zebra. Yeah, no. it is a fucking zebra. No, no. No. It's described as having equal lines of black and white stripes. No. It's a fucking zebra. You can't tell me that it is a horse with black and white stripes and that it is not a zebra. That is fucking ridiculous. Not, not, no. It is 1,000% a zebra. 
I'm I'm gonna lose my mind. Blue Light says no, guys. Jordan did say it's a horse. Jordan cannot describe a zebra and call it a horse. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck. Oh, no, 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 it's not a zebra. It's just a horse with equal black and white stripes down the side that doesn't look like any other horse in the country. It's a fucking zebra. Jesus Christ. Oh my Robert God. Robert Jordan Wait, out here trying to confuse us. I didn't read stripes, so that's why I'm confused. <clears throat> Ms. Zenko says it's a horse that looks like a zebra. That's what a zebra is. Oh, oh my God. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait. I've almost found it. Um, <laughs> no, literally, you know. I'm just kidding. I, I, I'm being, I'm being um, large for comedy's sake. It's a, it's a fucking zebra. <clears throat> We we got but we got like but you know what I mean like I I would have I would have loved okay, wait, wait, wait. to have um, had the POV of a Guinan realizing that she's Lael and shipless and that you know what it's time to marry Bale Doman that would yeah. have been fucking unreal and instead it's kind of a throwaway moment that Matt watches happen mm -hmm. and then it becomes all about the Amethyra stuff and which is great and I actually I, we'll get to it but I I really like the Amethyra stuff but. I, I was disappointed that that POV was not from a Guillen's POV. I think it would have been so much more interesting to see her go through that rather than to, sat and to just watch Matt be like, hey, that's weird and moving on. That's fair. No, you're, you're right. It's it's black, met white in straight, well, no, in straight lines. Yeah. What do you, what do you think straight lines are? Straight lines. It's a fucking zebra. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's weird. I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. That's weird. Guys, it's, I, it's a zebra. <laughs> Horses with black and white stripes. That's what zebras are. All right. You can't tell me later. Like, no, no, no it was a horse. There, it's just the, the the weird black and white striped horses from the other country. Maybe that's what fucking zebras are. Maybe zebras got like bred with horses, and so they're like striped, but they have the shape of a horse. You know, like I wow, I can't believe the I shape, did not read zebras that. Zebras have the shape of a horse. What are you talking about? No, they're much like uh, they're they're smaller. First of all. And they they have like they have a slightly different frame. They you know they like they are generally look like a horse, but like okay, Tuan is like three foot two, so no, a zebra is probably a perfect size for her. Oh my god, Ze zebras like zebra. We have domesticated zebras in our society that you can ride. That's well, not in our society, not in Canada, right? A, a zebra would fucking they're a lot hate it here. more wild. <laughs> no, you can domesticate a zebra. You you can. It is much harder. They are not bred to be domesticated, right? Horses, like horses, we have domesticated. Over... I think that I think that 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 here, yes. I think that if well, there's you... no zebras here, right, right. But I think that if you go to countries where there are zebras, <laughs> you will find that we've been domesticating zebras for thousands of years. Really? The same way that people domesticated horses, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess zebras look more like donkeys in terms of like shape, but I don't know. I've seen some pretty big zebras. That's so funny. I did not read the stripes at all. Yeah, I assumed it was like the yeah the edge of. I guess that yeah that's just how I read it. I don't know, I I yeah okay wow that threw me off. Canadian zebra, great band name. I agree, Rantelmoor. I agree. Let's get into chapter six: a stave and a razor. Um, uh, it's a shopping episode. So, yes, it is. Matt goes to town and he buys um some uh wood. He finds the the perfect piece of wood to make a two rivers longbow. Well, um, wait, no, it is a two rivers longbow, isn't it? No, no, it's a it's a stave. He just shapes. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, he shapes it and fucking turns it into a bow. You're right. That was that was, that was dumb. <laughs> I was like, oh, I found a two rivers longbow, and then I realized that he shaped it into a bow. So. No, because he. Yeah. No, he walks in and he's like, "How I'll much for this stick. piece of wood?" And yeah. she's like, "Oh, the quarter staff." And he's like, "This is not a quarter staff, you that's, silly lady." That's what I meant. I thought he was like, "No, it's clearly a bow, you idiot." But it's not a bow yet. It's just, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I just love the idea that he walks in and picks up a bow, and the woman's like, "That's a quarter staff," and he's, he's like, like, "No, the it's fuck not. Fuck it is." <laughs> that's literally what I thought. It's a DIY Two Rivers Longbow. Dakuna, uh, all, all Two Rivers Longbows are DIY Two Rivers Longbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, he goes in, uh, he buys that, and he also buys um, a horse, but it's a zebra. Okay, I learned something new, and chat's going to laugh at me. Oh, I, no, I, oh, no, what is this going to be? Well, I didn't know what a gelding was. 
and I Googled oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I Googled it because I was like, I just thought a gelding was a kind of horse, like a Palomino yeah, yeah. or whatever. Nope. Castrated horse. Yep. It's like, okay, cool. I legitimately had no idea. And I was like, I was like, oh my God. Why is that horrifying to you? We like spay and neuter like dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Do they spay and neuter dogs in Randland? I just like like the the not having like a modern way to like do it. I just like I, I was like I, I don't know how. I don't want to know how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it was not. I was not ex- expecting it. I do not know my horse flesh. That is that is correct. That's fair. Um, um as someone who's masturbated a horse, um, I did know that, but um. It's true. Happy for you, I yeah. guess. That sounds weird, um, but uh, uh, in horse it breeding, is weird. If this is this is one of those things that comes from um, growing up in the middle of nowhere. Uh, when, when you breed horses, the the horse the, when someone buys sperm of a horse, you don't like have that. You don't transport that horse to the mare that it's going to impregnate. Um, you have this like leather sleeve, and you actually like collect the sperm, and then you send the sperm. Uh, and then they no. impregnate the female horse with the no. sperm. I'm not. You are I'm a liar. Fully not joking. You're this a, is a fucking liar. I, I'm not. That's some bullshit. This um, is this is really true. No, Kevin, welcome back to the nerd table. I've been reading this series for so long. I never put together the razor was a zebra. I also missed it, so I understand how you missed <clears> it. I think you're a fucking liar. Um, Rodney Strait says they tried to domesticate zebras like horses. It did not work out well. So I I'm wrong. I thought there were domesticated zebras in Africa, but I am I'm mm. wrong about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, if you are, um, um, uh, like animal husbandry, uh, you, yeah, you, they, you have this like sleeve thing that, you, and it takes a couple of people to like calm the horse down and do it. And you, you collect the sperm and you're like, why would anyone do that? That sounds awful. It's cause that like little jar of sperms worth like 10 grand. Like it's like, it's like huge money. Yeah. It's big, big, big money. Um, I don't, I don't like it. Stories from Cowtown by Nerdy Knightley. I don't, I don't like it. Uh, I've had a lot of weird, like, so I'll never have farm a farm related jobs. I will only have a cat farm. Yeah. That's the only kind of farm I desire to have. I'm upset. Mm. Uh, speak easy. Welcome back to the nerd table. <laughs> uh, Brindle horses are also a thing that exists in real life, but I wouldn't be surprised if RJ was like, how do I write a zebra without saying zebra? Brindle horses, is that like a striped horse? I don't know I, what a brindle horse is. I, I mean, I'm that, that's not something I'm familiar the with. Only, the <clears> o- <throat> only horse I know is Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron. <laughs> Takuna says, also with human sperm bags, but horses lack opposable thumbs, <laughs> so they need help. Those poor horses, you know, <laughs> can't just jerk off whenever they need to. They gotta oh, have, man. like, a full team of people to do it. Um, All cool. right. <laughs> Cool. Let's I, move on. Wow, yeah. So uh yeah, Matt Matt does some shopping. Um he buys a meat pie uh that is really good, but he doesn't know what kind of meat it is. And we after The Last of Us on Sunday, I was worried about what kind of meat it was too. Um <laughs> no spoilers, sorry. That might be close to spoiler. Never mind. Uh <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Um wait, now I want to Google a brindle horse. Do it. Um so he buys a horse. And then he goes back to the uh, to the tents, and he's like, "Yo, Aludra, I figured it out. You Ooh. want um, cannons?" And she's like, "No, they're dragons." And I was like, yeah, "They're they're cannons." And then she's like, "What if what if we put like a ball inside, and then we shoot the ball out?" And I was like, "Oh, this you you discovered without, cannons without the sparkly bits." <laughs> Congratulations, cannons. I mean, th- these horses look cool, but the stripes don't meet each other in like straight lines, and they're not black and white. Well, this one is like kind of. It's black, white right? and gray. Yeah. I wouldn't say that's black. You know what I mean? Yeah. It yeah. is a beautiful horse. I definitely seen those before. Oh. I yeah, just no, was no. not aware that they were called brindle horses. Um. Okay. So then. Um, All right. Uh, <sighs> he goes to see Aludra. Um, oh, no, no, uh, no, in this chapter he hasn't solved the Bellfounder thing. He f- solves that in the next chapter. Well, yeah, when he gets to her. He goes to, um, Tuan, and uh, Tuan is um, being a pain in the ass, still calling him Toy, because she's the fucking worst, and Matt decides to call her Precious. 
Um, All I could fucking think of is Gollum. Yeah, yeah. I was like, my precious. I was like, oh, by... What is happening? By season five, can we have Andy Serkis playing Matt? If we're doing that, ev- there's a different Matt every season. Different Matt every season. We get Andy Serkis back for it. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Finally, SK, thank you for uh, being a nerd or for four months. Welcome uh, back to the nerd table. I've seen the instruction, instructional videos on the hub, and humans also get assistance at the sperm bank. That's, uh, I, you know. Porn is not real life. <laughs> just letting you know. Just letting you know. Um, uh, I also wrote down, I forgot to mention, that canonically in uh, Randland, horses are made into glue as well. Um, because Matt calls the horses that suck glue bait. Yeah. That's that's true in real life, too. Yeah, yeah, But I just didn't think that they had, like, glue in Randland, I guess. I was like, oh, no, the horses are also turned into glue in Randland. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hor- horses being turned into glue goes back. A long time. <laughs> cool. Learning a lot. I don't yeah. like it. Why? Uh, it's just, I don't know. Like, calling them glue bait is just sounds so awful. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. But at the same time, I feel like... And, and this is where I kind of differ with um, some modern idealism that is about, like, not using animals for anything. Like, veganism I sometimes struggle with. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, the the only way to truly be vegan in everything mm-hmm. is to create everything synthetically. And yes. I would much rather use the natural world yeah, synthetic for its thing, purpose yeah. rather than just make more plastic. Yeah, synthetic things are not good for the environment. So, like, yeah. I, would al- I will always wear a real leather jacket over a fake leather jacket because... A fake leather jacket, it's it's plastic. Like, yeah. it, there's no... It's going to be around for a thousand years. Yeah, whereas, like, my real leather jackets will degrade and aren't going to turn into microplastics and destroy the earth, right? Yeah. And, I, you know, obviously yeah. I can't avoid plastic, and there's there's a lot of things that we use, but, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I find that people get so antsy about, oh, well, this comes from this animal or this comes from this, and I'm like, yeah, but the replacement thing is, is just more microplastics in the ocean. Yep. And so, yeah. like, the, there's a trade-off in everything. Yeah. And th- there are ways in which I understand, like, what, like, humans are, have inhumanely harmed the earth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, a lot of the solutions to stop doing that are going to inhumanely harm the earth just in a different way. Like, you're training one kind of harm for another. Yes, exactly. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's complicated. Um, I just, yeah, I wrote down, like... Glue bait, because I was like, I've never fucking heard that term before, and it's awful. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there are there are new leathers coming out. Uh, I, I've heard that there's a apple leather that's really good. Apple leather. Yeah. There's oh. um, and some mushroom leathers. So so there might be like more like uh, alternative leathers in the future that are they're getting better. Cool. Well, um, that's that that's awesome. But yeah, yeah. Pl- uh, plastic. I'm like, ugh, I, no, yeah, that's not helping anybody. But uh, but a lot of the time, if you are if you are Replacing something, you're replacing it with synthetic. Something synthetic, and like, yeah. yeah. It's not great. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah. Uh, cannons go boom. And... Uh, cannons go boom. Oh, uh, no, we're not at cannons yet. Well, we, yeah, we got to Ludra. Where, uh, no, that he he meets her twice. The first time, he's like, I don't know yet. And then the next time, he's like, oh, it's cannons. Oh, oh. I guess I just blended them together. Man. Um, he goes to meet Noel, uh, who's telling all of her stories about Jane Farstrider. We find out that Jane is um, really? a man. This whole time, I thought Jane Farstrider was a woman. So did I. This was the first chapter where I was like, "Oh, Jane Farstrider's a man." Yeah, I know. I thought it was. I I thought it was a woman as well. All right, is is Noel uh, is Noel Jane Farstrider? Well, Jane Farstrider, like. I mean, I guess Noel is older, so yeah. it's it's it is possible. I, I just don't understand what relevance that would have. Like, it's like, oh yeah, Noel's related to the this guy. Like, that's 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 kind of cool. But like, making him Jane Farshrider, like, I don't really know what Jane Farshrider has to do with the story of the Dragon Reborn. It's the book so. that Matt and Rand were reading growing up. Yeah. That that's it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems weird that he's like, yeah, he's my cousin. Yeah. I want to do things he's never done. I'm like, why are you so jealous of him? Or are you him and you're like looking for that that next hit of adventure? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I, he very much might be. We'll get to that later. Um. Yeah. 
I know Jane to me. I've never known any men named Jane. Apparently, it's Jaheen. So what? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Robert Jordan makes up his own names. Uh, Embry says TV or uh, Pe- Pevara says the TV series made the moment. I don't remember them having a gender. I just remember them reading the book at one point. Oh yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. We'll see though. Um, I'm curious where that's going because Noel has kind of been around in the background for a while now, and I'm waiting for him like for all of it to come into focus. Yeah, well, he's a it, looks character. Like, it looks like <clears throat> it's going to. He never shuts up though. Um, <laughs> I love that Matt's like he tells these stories. There's no way they're true, and I'm like yeah. Matt, look at your life. Look at what the last year of your life has been like and yeah. tell me that that man who's 50 can't have experienced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there are so many characters. One, one of the funny things about Robert Jordan's world is that there is literal magic mm-hmm. and there are literal monsters. Mm-hmm. And the Dark One is literal, not fictional. Yeah. Not like our world where, like, Satan exists, right? The Dark One exists. Yes. In this world. Yes. And everyone has the same religion. Everyone believes the same thing because there's enough evidence of what's going on that they all believe it. Mm-hmm. And characters constantly react to situations like it's like they're from our world. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that magical thing can never have happened. And I'm like, but people have, but you know people who do magic. Like Matt is like, ah, it's not possible. And I'm like, Matt, your best friend is Jesus. He can summon lightning from the sky. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, there's no way that guy went to Shara at any point in the 50 years he's been alive. Like, it's just such a weird... Yeah, I know. He's like, you know what? I, I believe too many things. This is where I draw the line. Like, your friend turns into a wolf in his dreams and fights gods. Like, well, you, I don't you know have if lived... Matt really knows that. He might not. But but you know what I mean? Like, there's... Matt, when, he, when Matt thinks of his best friend, he sees him naked in bed with his wife. You know what I mean? Like, there is so... Princess, yeah. He, he lives such a weird life mm-hmm. that is so random and out there. He watched his best friend fight a 3,000-year-old demon in the sky. Yeah. And then he turns to this guy and he's like, there's no way you've ridden a horse that far. And I'm like, what What do you mean? <laughs> yep. Uh, Timothy, welcome back to the Nerd Table. Yay, love this book. Looking forward to meeting you guys at Jordan Con. Let's fucking go. These last mm. four books are incredible. Yeah. We're, we're, we're very excited for Jordan Con. It's going to be a lot of fun. Nicholas Cardello, uh, I subjectively recommend Nerdy do polls on chat asking watches opinions. And since they can only pick answers, you giving to choose is spoilers free? About I I'm sorry, specific? Nicholas. I don't understand what you mean. Asking watches opinions about like should I you want about like should I get a watch? I I think they watchers mean, like, opinions. The watchers okay. opinions. Sorry, I thought you. I my brain went to uh, you think I need a watch and I should pull chat on which watch I should buy and then the whole rest of the sentence didn't make sense because I got stuck on watches. I've been thinking about watches for the last That's week. Fair. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not sure <clears throat> what we're polling uh, chat on. But. About what to name the car? Oh, I forgot about that. Guys, we need to name the car. Well, we'll do that. Um, we'll, we'll do that at the end. At the end of the pod today, we're going to. There's going to be a vote mm-hmm. at the end of the podcast today, uh, and you guys are going to help us name the new uh, the Tucson. New car. Yes, yes. I can't believe I forgot about that. Oh my god! Wow. Um. Yeah. So. Um, that's it. <laughs> Oh, no, uh, Julian shows up and is like, hey, there's Sanchen across the street. And Matt's like, oh, fuck. Right. <clears throat> Chapter seven, a cold medallion. Let's get into it. Yes, we got we got the mm. car. <laughs> yeah, we got we got the car. It's amazing. We sold the old car for a little bit less than we wanted to sell the old car. But um, realistically, Whatever. with how much the back bumper was rusting, there's not a lot we could do about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Matt uh, sends everyone to be like, hey, spread the word. We got to be careful. Everyone chill. And he goes to see the Aes Sedai. And he's like, oh, my God, my chest is so cold. They're doing shit they should not be doing because the Sanchen are right there. What if the domain feels them channeling? And so he bursts in. And I don't really know. Okay, here's here's the problem I have with the scene. Uh huh. I don't know what the fuck is going on. And they never clarify. What do you mean? I don't know why Jolene is beating the shit out of what's her face. Uh, because she channeled and attacked. Attacked who? Uh, uh, well, attacked them all in the room. There was like uh, uh, there was like a thing that like hit them all, and so Jolene channeled and started beating the shit out of her. 
I don't, I, but I don't understand, like, I, I, okay, I don't understand, I understand that. I don't, I don't understand who started the fight. There was an argue, they were arguing, and Bethman got pushed to the edge, and, and the power just exploded out of her. Um, and so... Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. they were pushing her on the fact that she can channel... That, okay, when I was, I read it over again and I didn't, I didn't put, that for some reason didn't make sense to me. It was. That makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, yeah, they you were You know fighting. what I wouldn't do to someone who just channeled for the first time and doesn't know how to control it? Abuse them with the power? Slap the shit out of them. Um, but she's doing that. Uh, and so what does Matt do in response? Uh-huh. Um, he slaps the shit out of her. So that's fun. Yeah. Beating up people. It's fun. Oh, sorry. Women. Women getting beat up a lot. Again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't love this. Um, I didn't love this either. And we kind of talked about this. Yeah. Because you were reading it and you're like, more of this again. And I was like, I know. I wish that the spanking and, like, physical abuse of, of characters, like, it's, especially the spanking. I wish that the spanking was a much less prevalent thing. Yeah. Especially among the Aes Sedai. Because I think this moment would have actually had an impact and a comedic effect if... The I said I didn't beat the shit out of each other all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like if Matt comes in, they can't channel against him, and he spanks the shit out of what's her face because she's an asshole. Uh, it's J J Jolene. Jolene, yeah. Maybe yeah. B- he he spanks the shit out of Jolene, and it's like, okay, it's just another instance of another person like spanking the shit out of each other, or someone else getting slapped across the face, or whatever it is. Like I I think that this scene actually m- might have worked in a scenario. Where people just didn't spank the shit out of each other all the time. Well, but but this and this is the point I want to make is that I understand what happens here physically. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm not even necessarily against it, right? Mm-hmm. It in on its own, mm-hmm. I think that this scene actually does work. Mm-hmm. My problem with the scene is that after the book that uh, the after the first week of reading and the complaints that I had about how it's just in this POV this one's being abused and this POV this one's being abused. Yeah. By the time we get to this scene, which I think is the most justified abuse of all of them. Oh yeah. Because it is it, it is telling the story, not justified in, in that I think it should happen, but justified story-wise in that I think that this is a moment of all of these characters, this tension between these characters has been building and building and building and building, mm-hmm. and this is the moment it explodes. Yes. But it is undercut by the fact that this same thing is happening in every storyline. Yes. So this doesn't feel like an explosion of tension. It feels like the another day yeah. for the Survey Corps. Another but, but Tuesday, yeah. It just, it, just, it just doesn't... This should have been like this climactic moment for this storyline where like these characters have been at each other's throats for so long yeah. that it... They, it cannot be contained and it resorts to physical violence. Yeah. Which I think is... Which is real, right? Like, they've been stuck in this fucking carriage going so slow down the road. Yeah. And what hampers it is that it is such a common occurrence in Randland. Yes. That it actually doesn't feel like an explosion. The impact, yeah. It doesn't It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't feel like an escalation of anything. Yeah. Because everything is at this level all the time physically. Yes. The threat of physical violence towards women is... is so constant yeah. that it's hard to look at this as like, oh my God, these characters lost it. They're yeah. spanking each other. That's and what the White Tower does literally all the time. Well, and that's what I mean. This scene actually could have been like S tier in, in a way. Like obviously what happens is like shitty. I, I don't oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. people hitting one another. Mm-hmm. But like that, yeah, that breaking of tension could have been so impactful, right? Yeah. If, if, if it wasn't, like you said, just another fucking Tuesday in Randland, you know? Um, because then the warders the, are like, oh my God, Jolene got happened? spanked. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, that that literally happens all the time. You should be used to it. Like the warders should like be like, oh, someone's getting spanked. Jolene's getting spanked. This must have been some weird Aes Sedai shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's, it's hard for me to buy that like the warders are so upset about this when this is just so common. Yeah, uh, yeah, people, f- yeah. And so people when, you, each other when you, literally all the time. when you overuse abuse in your writing, which mm-hmm. I think Robert Jordan does, I think he overuses it. Yeah. I think he goes to that well for like shock factor too frequently. Mm-hmm. It loses power. Mm-hmm. And now I'm not even like upset about it because reading this, it would be upsetting to read. Yeah, Normally. yeah, I'd be yeah, like, yeah. oh, wow, like they, they went too far. Well, because, There's going to be consequences. Yeah. But I don't, but like reading this, I was like, oh. I rolled my eyes and I rolled my eyes because there's not going to be any consequences because this is what everyone does every fucking day in this world. Yeah. And, and you, the, the impact of the literal impact is lost on, um, 
The, the impact is lost in the plethora. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's, yeah. We read about it all the time in, like, Every POV, there's always something. And I, I think that this scene, like, in and of itself was 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 great because you have this heightened tension between between the Aes Sedai and the Soldam, right? They they have to live together and they they <clears throat> they don't like one another based on what happened, obviously. There's this heightened tension and something explodes and Jolene reacts in, you know, a, a violent way. Mm-hmm. But she's also been attacked by the power, so she's on edge. So when Matt comes in behind and grabs her, she responds in turn with, like, physical violence because she lashes out she, without even, like, s- probably seeing who it is, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like, if I had just been attacked and someone came up and grabbed me, like, I might also explode violently as well. And, yeah, and yeah. that's the thing is the scene is so well written. And then, you know, and then Matt grabs her and, like, spanks her. And, and I think that all that coming to a head... Would have been great. I I would have preferred if Matt had just punched her in the nose. Just booped her on the snoot. Like she, because he grabs her hand to stop her from hitting Bethman. And then she turns around and socks him. And like rather than, he pulls her over his knee and starts hitting her as hard as he can because he doesn't know how many skirts she's wearing and he wants her to hurt. Yeah. He wants her to feel it. I would have preferred if he just punched her in the face. Yeah. She punches him in the face, he punches her in the face, reciprocity, like, well, the, and people, tensions bubble over and then everybody stops. People have <clears throat> knee-jerk reactions to things. And so someone going, oh, is is more forgivable to me than someone being like, oh, grabbing, bending, spanking, spanking, and continuing to do well, it. And spanking long enough to think, oh, how many how, skirts how is she many, wearing? Yeah. I need to spank her harder. Like it's the 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 geography of that is weird. It is, yeah. But it is but I I, I just I this moment was so I just rolled my eyes through it, and I yeah. wish that I hadn't, because I feel like this storyline like deserved moment. a climax. I agree. And I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I it's it's not even that it's not that it's poorly written. It is really just that after all of the other things that have happened in this book, and after mm-hmm. New Spring, and after I, I just was kind of like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dirt Burb, thank you for that super thank chat. You super chat. <clears throat> he says it's the spanking for me. Real people have tempers, and if you push them, there are consequences. But adults yeah. spanking adults is just weird. That's yes. what I mean. Having that, having that, you know, like Jolene gets grabbed and she's like, uh, and she mm. slaps him, right? And if Matt had been like, holy shit, and like bopped her, like that, that feels more like h- human and, and relatable to me than, ah, yes, I'm going to bend them over my knee and just like beat the shit out of their butt. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was so close. It's so close. But unfortunately, the things leading, the, the things from the previous books all accumulating kind of deflated this moment a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I do want to come in the writing in the moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, I think that that's like, because I think that it is, deserves it. I think that like this deserved a climax. I don't love the climax that we got, but mm-hmm. I, it deserves that, right? The, the, they, the tension in that trailer in particular on this circus is so palpable that something had to break eventually. Yeah. Now, ob- now what's interesting is that I do like mm-hmm. that Matt spanks Jolene in a way that I think is inappropriate. And that, guess what? Everyone in that trailer thinks is inappropriate. And he loses his advantage among the Aes Sedai because of it. His actions in this moment actually harm him. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, hey... Con- Matt has consequences for his actions after this in in a real way, right? The 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 um not Maroth domain um the Soldan? Soldams uh the Soldams will no longer feed him information and they're not watching the Aes Sedai anymore because they're now channelers and so he has lost the the two of them watching each other and the two of the those two groups keeping each other in check. He's lost that because of his actions. Yeah. Um, and, and also their actions. It's not 100% on Matt. But I, I did actually like that coming out of this very intense situation, that there the was a literal, there, there was a shift in the relationships between these characters and that it at least had purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wish that it had a um, more impact for me. Yeah. Uh, and this book, I, every time someone gets spanked now, I just roll my eyes. Like, uh, even when it is narrative and not just background detail. Yeah. I, I just can't, I can't get invested in it. And it happens so often that it's a shame because it does, it's starting to really like take me out of my reading and mm-hmm. it, it interrupts the rhythm of reading for me mm-hmm. because I, I oftentimes I put the book down for an hour. Like yeah. I get to the spanking and I go, God damn it, this again. And I close my iPad and I put the book down. And I'm like, you know what? I'll fucking come back to it. I'm going to go do something else because I, I, I'm i like exhausted of it. Yeah. And a book that makes me put the book down as often as these do mm-hmm. It's unfortunate. It, it is unfortunate at this point that I that I'm having this response because I I never put the first six books down yeah, ever, yeah. not once. Yeah. 
And now I just kind of, I'm like, you know what? I'll get to this later. I, I don't want to read yeah. this right now. I'll get to it later. For me, it's not like putting it down, but I have a similar reaction where I start to just like glaze over things, right? I'm like, okay, it's this again. But the chat got so mad at me when I said I was glazing over things. Well. Because I missed that Tulon was black. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that's on you. It is mentioned several times. But yeah, like when, when things get like that, you know, I, I kind of glaze over it because I'm like, oh, I just got want to get to the good parts. And I mm -hmm. think that I think that doing a book club of like of a book of sections of a book really makes the high high stand out, but also the lows. Um, because you you take a moment and you you actually yeah. have to think about it and talk about it and criticize it in the moment. Whereas if we got to the end of the book, right? I think that these couple Matt chapters were like where he's like shopping and not a lot like happens. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't feel as impactful because we'd be talking about the book as a whole. But I mm -hmm. think I think that it is important to like to 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 talk about a book as a whole, which is why we do the full book recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to also take the moments within the book for what they are yeah. and analyze those. And, you know, I'm glad that we have this because I find it enjoyable. I'm, <clears throat> I, I, I don't mean this as any dig at Mormonism, I promise. But I, I am, in, I'm curious to see, because Brandon Sanderson is a Mormon, um, yeah. and they are, you know, not the most sexually open people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope that that's not inappropriate to say but mm -hmm. uh i do wonder and i know that um his writing has been considered his early writing has been considered prudish at times yes right right, right. and that this is closer to his early writing than what he's writing now mm -hmm. i am wondering how much of this stuff goes away immediately when he takes over like i am wondering how much of this is stuff that he just wouldn't write at all yeah but i'm also wondering if i'm going to like those books more because i don't think robert jordan writes this stuff particularly well Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder if just by having an author who is uh, is more into the fantasy side of the series, which is the stuff that I think is the better part of the series, yes, yes, and yes. less into the weird kink shit mm -hmm. that I don't think works almost ever in this series, mm -hmm. um, I am wondering if those books are just going to immediately feel more like my speed mm -hmm. just because a lot of this stuff disappears because Brandon Sanderson either wasn't comfortable writing it or didn't feel like it was necessary. Yeah. And I also don't think it's necessary. So like, yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm so curious when, cause this is the last book Robert Jordan wrote. I, I'm so curious what the switch is going to feel like when we get into the Brando Sando stuff Yeah, and how that's going to hit us. Yeah. No, I, I will, yeah, we'll find out soon enough for sure. But I, I do think that there will be a shift, right? It just, it, you can't have, no, no two people write the same, even if you try and like mimic someone's style. Mm -hmm, like, yeah. uh, and so I'm really interested to see how that plays out. Yeah, and I think we'll be having a lot of conversations about like what that shift feels like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And and like, I'm, I'm curious to see which characters don't translate. Yeah. Or if he nails all of them. I don't know. I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. Um. Matt leaves that situation. <laughs> um, yep. And, uh, yeah. He goes... Matt, Matt, Matt does kind of settle them out. By, uh, they, they all kind of freak out at Matt. Matt's like, look, you'd all be wearing collars if it weren't for me. And they're all like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what? Uh, right. Yeah, I guess so. Um, they also all, like, uh, find out about the medallion, right? This is, like, a big deal for them. And now they won't stop bothering him about it. <laughs> Oh. Oh my. Well, uh anyways, uh well we'll talk about that later. Um <laughs> sorry, y'all, real life things yeah, is sorry. distracting, but it's fine. Um well, it's fine. Here, let me um let me let me take over. Uh, the women are arguing, Matt's upside of the wagon, uh, and then the jo warders are like, what happened? And Matt's like, I don't fucking know, dude. Oh. I got out. They're going crazy. I said I stuff. Women shit. You know what I mean? I, I, I left while I could. Yeah, you should probably ask them about it, because, you know, it's not my place. And then he goes to sleep on the floor. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, pardon me. Um, which takes us... Oh, uh, we also skipped over that, um... Wait, is this... Did you go to the next... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Aludra wants to call her cannons dragons. <laughs> and the cannonballs uh, dragon eggs. Um, which I actually think is uh, hilarious. But also, 
definitely worried that this is going to aid the Dark One somehow, especially with Matt's, like, vision, vi visions. We're going to call them that because I, I don't really know what it is. His, like, toviran -ness. He's like, yeah, there's, like, laughing and uh, I, I don't feel well about these things. Um, and it, it does seem that that these, like, I, I'll call them weapons of mass destruction because I feel like in Randland that it kind of counts as one, you know? Something you can launch kilometers and have it, like, decimate rows of people. Um, you know, there's there's all these people that die and Matt, like, sees, like, what he thinks is the Dark One laughing, uh, which is pretty ominous. Um, I think that these cannons are severely going to um, backfire. Um... It, guys, it's it's probably good news, but it's not something that we can share <clears throat> until it, it's Sorry, confirmed. guys. Uh, yeah, sorry. I just had to um, deal with that quickly um, just because they needed an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, yeah, we have to... Um... That's gonna be so weird. <laughs> On that note, uh, I, uh, I, I I was in a movie, and if you want to see one of the posters for it, I put it in announcements in the Discord if you wanted to take a look at that. Um, that'll be out. Yeah, sorry about sometime. that, guys. Um, sometimes your agent texts you, and you have to you respond. You have to respond immediately. Um, cool. What are we? What? What? What is I this just, nightly I, morning show? Welcome no. to the nightly morning show for uh Friday. Why are we doing a morning show on a Friday? Actually, it's a uh, it's fun fact. We we do a book club now. I can't read. Well, that's gonna be a problem. I caramba. <laughs> what am I wearing? Is this a new beanie? Yes. Oh my god! It is a new beanie. Can you, you get like that it? at Fourth Wall? Yeah, yeah. Fourth Wall. We need we need a better we need to fix the URL for that. No, it's that's that's how they do their URLs. No, but we can have a custom. We can add a custom URL. We need to just come up with something. Is it not Nerdy Nightly? Isn't it like Fourth Wall Dash whatever? No, no, but we can make our own and then we can link. Uh, nerdy Nightly Dash Shop dot Fourth Wall dot com. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. We need. We're, 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 I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna come up with a better URL for that. Um, all right, so what did you, what, what were you just talking about? You you inform me. Um, we were talking about uh, Matt's vision of the Dark One laughing uh, while everybody dies from cannons. Yeah. It's pretty dark. Yeah, okay. Pretty concerning. So, prediction time. Um, Matt figures out the Bell Founder thing. It wasn't, like, that hard to figure out, I don't feel like, but... Mm -hmm. Where is... Um, <clears throat> In the dreams, he tried to catch the things with his hands, tried to stop them, yet they rained down in unending streams on a hundred battlefields. In his dreams, he wept for the death and destruction, and somehow it seemed that the rattling of the dice in his head sounded like laughter. Not his laughter, the Dark One's laughter. Do you think... All right. Hear me out. I've already told you this theory, so you actually know. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that the cannons get made by Matt, but then they get stolen and they get used by the Dark One? Because that's what this section makes me feel like. I Here's the thing. I don't know if I think that they're stolen and used by the Dark One, but I think that the Dark One, like, I, I think that they are used to create a further divide between... Um, like the the Sanchin and Randland, because everyone has to unite to defeat Good. the Dark One. No, they don't. No. No. Well, the Sanchin, the Sanchin have the the Sanchin are not good. The Sanchin are inherently evil. Yeah. Their culture is evil. Yeah. And they're, they're they also the Sanchin barely exist at this point. Like the Sanchin are the, the Sanchin don't bring much to the table. Right. Yeah. Shandar at this point <laughs> apparently is in absolute ruin. Their country's gone. Seraph is trying to kill Tuan. Like 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 I don't know that the Sanchin <clears throat> the, the the they're losing rock in left right and center. Like three books from now, I don't know that the Sanchin are going to be much of a uh, much of a force. Yeah, I just think that uh, I think that it's not going to be like as simple as like someone stole the cannons. I think it's going to they're going to be used in a, in like a not good way. Like a, a I here's my thing. I yeah. think that the final. I I don't think even the good guys are going into the final battle thinking that they're going to be able to do it without violence. Right. No, so no, I don't. No. So yeah. I think that if the cannons make it to the final battle on the good guys team, that is inherently bad for the dark one. Yeah. Right. So I think that if Matt gets those cannons, I, I think that like, and maybe these aren't prophecies. Maybe these are. I I just every time I hear in his dreams he saw this thing, I'm like, oh, that's probably going to happen then. Every character has some level of prophecy in this world. Yes. And so when I hear that. 
the 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 creation of these cannons is making the dark one laugh. Mm -hmm. My immediately thought immediately thought my immediate thought is that they're going to end up in the dark one's hands for the final battle. I don't know. I think that they're gonna be in Matt's hands, and he's gonna make the wrong choice. But I don't know what that choice is at this moment, right? So far, Matt okay. has seemed to have made the the right choices in term. Well, I don't know. I don't know about right choices, but ha like you know, when the dice stop, it feels like very impactful. I think I I, I think that somebody is going to make the wrong choice, and that it is going to do more harm than good. But I don't know what that choice is yet because I don't think I'm like I, I don't think we're far enough in, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. But uh, C Swing talks about uh, Gwen having a dream about Matt bowling over many men and killing them. Yeah, no, I I I just don't. Here's 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 the thing, and like maybe this is gonna sound dark, but when you're in my opinion, when you're fighting the army of the devil, having better technology doesn't it isn't evil. Yeah, but it, he, they, he, they're like, not seeing him, like, mow down Trollocs. They're seeing him mow down people. Yeah, and people are going to show up and fight for the devil. But that's why I don't know if this fight is, like, Tarmangadon, like, against, like, the Shadow. It seems like a different battle. What, there, there's, there's only so much time left. How many battles are there before Tarmangadon? At some point, we have to start fighting the devil in this series about fighting the devil. I'm getting a little sick <laughs> of not fighting the devil in this series about fighting the devil. Yeah. Because honestly, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, at some point, we start heading towards Tarmangadon, right? At some point, something happens about the Dark One. Because I'm getting a real tired of like, no, 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 don't worry. We're going to spend nine books fighting the Sanchin. Maybe Sanchin is the Dark One. Yeah, they are. They're slavers. Yeah. They are inherently evil people. Yeah. If that's controversial, I don't care. Slavery is so bad that if you are a slaver, you are an inherently bad person. Yeah, no, no. I, if you I, perpetuate slavery on another person, that like you are inherently in the wrong in my mind. Yeah, no, I, I agree. If if the Sanchin turned out to be like the hands of the Dark One, I'd be like, oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Checks out. It doesn't really make sense because the Forsaken just wiped them out. But like, I don't know. I just, I, I think that like the, this whole... This series is like wearing really thin on the ice of side quests, mm -hmm. and the. I wonder. Like, if if someone was like, "Should I read the Wheel of Time?" I would literally tell them, "Do you like side don't, quests? Don't don't go into it thinking that it that it will ever move towards the goals that the first book sets up until the last book. It's like the watching middle is just characters doing random shit. It's like watching streamers play The Witcher. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what if it's what uh, what if it's not Matt's actual actions mm -hmm. that are being seen, but if it's the uh, the unreliable narrator of it all, and that the people become fearful because you know, like Matt, like uses these cannons to um, to kill people to like. Um, you know, like, t to further, to get towards Tarman Gaiden, you know, like, kills bad people. But it, it's a rumor that, like, spirals out of control, and it's, like, a, it's more of a, like, bad reputation kind of thing. If magic didn't exist, I would see how that works. Mm -hmm. But Rand can throw lightning <laughs> as far as he can see. Yeah. Like, the, the one problem with cannons in the Wheel of Time is that they're not nearly as devastating as what most of our characters can do. Yeah. Cannonball, look, don't get me wrong. Cannonballs are insanely devastating. The magic that they wield, the Ashaman are a thousand times more deadly than cannons, than a single cannon. You would have to outnumber the Ashaman a thousand to one for them to be at all as scary as an Ashaman who can teleport to wherever he wants on the battlefield yeah, yeah. and then destroy all of the earth in the location that he is. So so here's the thing. When when you have a big battle like that, you kind of have to have your magic users taking care of the magic users because they're the most dangerous. So if they're tied up, if the magic battle is like the magicians fighting one another, yeah. the normies having cannons against the other normies is still very helpful. No, no, but I'm saying that in terms of like striking fear into the hearts of men, I don't understand why men in a world where Ashaman can hurl lightning bolts would be like, but the cannons are evil. Well, because anyone can use it, te technically. Okay, yeah, but, but I'm not saying that I think that that's exactly what's going to happen, but it was kind of like 
But in a world idea. of in a world of magic, it is hard for me to believe that you could convince a populace that the magic isn't that d- evil, but <laughs> the, ca- the, cannon. the cannons are right. Like yeah, yeah. Th- there is already a force. It's it's not. In the real world, when we developed guns, Maybe it's... they were all of a sudden the most destructive force on the planet. Yeah. There was nothing more destructive than guns. <clears throat> in Randland, they already have nukes. And so the, the creation of cannons is not now the most destructive thing on the planet. Yeah. And so it, it's hard for me to buy that the populace would be more scared of cannons when when they're not nukes. Like they have, there was a man who had held so much of a magic power that he turned into a mountain. They might see the cannons as magic. Sure, but magic already exists. Yeah, so but like, they're scared of magic. Like most people are like, oh my God, the Ashman are fucking terrifying. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, yeah, but I that's, don't know. that's not a new fear. That's just, the, that's the same thing that we already have. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, this is one where I'm like, there's a bunch of different ways I think it could go, but mm-hmm. I, I think it's I interesting. I, we definitely don't have the full picture to know what this, like, kind of vision represents. Yeah. Unless it's just very basic, like, yes, Matt is just going to kill a bunch of people with the cannons. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, there's, there's, a, there's a line in this chapter, I think it's this chapter, um, that I wanted to talk about. Um, Matt and Tuan are having a conversation. Uh-huh. Um, oh, actually, it might be later. Oh. We'll, we'll get into it later. <clears throat> For now, let's move on from the cannons and let's get into um, Aginan and uh, Doman. Uh, they got married. We talked about this at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, I'm I'm a little disappointed that this all happens off page. We haven't had an Aginan POV in forever, and w- any of the chapters in Crossroads of Twilight could have been her POV changing her mind. Like that, we've spent so much time with the circus um, to not get why she changes her mind from her POV, and I, I just found that a little bit disappointing. It's cool that they got married. I'm glad she changed her mind because I was very upset. At when we read that chapter, yeah, about how it went down, yeah, um, I was not happy about that. <laughs> I also think this whole Lailwin shipless, like I'm gonna let, I'm I'm running away from Sanjin culture, but I'm gonna let Tuan name me. Yeah, the naming thing, I I I still don't understand when she like, yeah, when she's decided that she, she's never going to be Sanjin yet, like she's never returning to Shandar, like that that can't happen for her. The name thing still is strange to me, but yeah, I'm hoping it becomes a like. I am going to take this and I'm going to like use it and embrace it <clears throat> as like a fuck you. Like Iginan was a Sanchin and now I am not a Sanchin. I am Lilwin. I maybe. guess yeah. Ma- maybe, maybe. It's the only way that I can I think the only fuck you that you she could actually give though would be like, no, my name's fucking Iginan and I don't listen to you anymore. I fuck you. That would be my thought as well. But that is the character from Fires of Heaven who does not exist anymore. The Iganin that I fell in love with is not a character in these books anymore. This has to be a different person because all of the fire and all of the everything interesting about Iganin in Fires of Heaven mm-hmm. or was it Fires of when were they in Tenshiko? Was it? It might have been the book before Shadow Rising. In um, the beginning, at the beginning. Anything interesting about um, Iganin in that book? has not existed in the character since. I, uh, and this is like the worst character assassination I've ever seen. It's pretty brutal. When they leave Tenchiko, Aginan is a fucking badass, interesting character who I fucking loved. Yeah. And now she's, she's I, I, I don't care about her at all. She's fucking lost everything interesting. And she, she makes Bill no Doman spine. less interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, not my ship captain. The, the Sanchin storyline really ruins everybody. Yeah. It makes every character that touches it less interesting because they have to bend over. Robert Jordan has all of his characters bend over backwards to justify the existence of the Sanchin in this world. Yeah. And it doesn't really work. And so every character who interacts with this storyline immediately becomes a lesser version of themselves. Mm-hmm. Matt is the most affected by this. Again, well, again, again, it just had less to begin with. But yeah. again, and two. Yeah. And I, I'm very concerned about where Rain and parents' storylines are going to go working with the Sanchen. Yep, yep. But uh, it is really disappointing how, like, just fucking milk toast again and became after how... There was a point where I was like, is she the best new character? Like, after that book, I was like, yeah, fuck, I love Yeah, we were her. like, we love again and then... <clears throat> Yeah. But but uh Carlac, thank you for that super chat before it goes off page. She has to be the only character I've ever read who stood up to her culture, walked away from it for love, and managed to have less of a spine in doing so than she did while she was a member of the culture. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Like it, it truly is remarkable to read. Yeah. Uh Carlac, thank you. Um I am like an hour late starting today's show, so whatever you're talking about now, all I have to say is not in this economy. Thank you, yes. <clears throat> thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um 
And it's just like numb to it. It's like what? I don't pay attention anymore. I'm I, I can't. It's 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 not funny. It's like it's hilarious. It's not it's it's a funny joke that is just being used poorly. That's why it's funny. It's not funny. Use the joke well. <clears throat> uh, you just don't understand comedy. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, teach yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna teach me comedy. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. Uh huh. I'm very good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are great at being the butt of the joke. Um, <sighs> only short jokes. And you have a great butt. Uh. <clears throat> um. Yeah. I mean, I think that's. Uh, we do get an awesome moment from uh again in here though. Mm-hmm. Or sorry, Lil when That's her name. I. I. We should get it right. Um, if that's what she wants to be called, we should call her that. Uh, Leowin, uh does go to Amathira uh, and picks her up off the ground and is like, hey, fuck that shit. Don't do that anymore. Do you want to come have a drink with us? Um, and the, my, and like this whole scene, like Matt doesn't say anything. He doesn't interact with it in any way. This should have been from her point of view. They, they, they could have saved this moment for me by having it from Leowin's point of view. Yeah. And by having it from Matt's point of view is he's like, oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. 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 So they leave, and that, that that's it. We kind of see, like, oh, maybe she's changing. She doesn't view this woman as property anymore. Hey, that's fucking great. Let's go, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, having it be Matt's point of view here, I think just kind of weakens all of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and then uh, in order to weaken Matt even more... Uh, he starts hanging out with Tuan, and he's like, hey, <laughs> let me bring you gifts. Let me make you smile. I just want you to be happy, my my little slaver wife. That's I, I just want to see you smile, because your eyes are so pretty, and your smile is so big, and the things that make you happy make me happy. And guess what makes her happy? Slavery. Uh, <clears throat> it's great. It's a great relationship. No notes. Yeah. Also, here's a horse. A zebra. Here's a zebra. <laughs> it's a zebra. Is that should we, what we should call our car? The Razor? Because it's black and white. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll let you guys vote on it later. I don't know because I don't want I don't want our car to be Tuan's horse. I don't want to name my car after my least favorite character in the series. That's course. valid. Absolutely um, valid. Not going to be on the poll. There we go. Not on the poll. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's it, yeah. Reading about Tuan is rough because she is so fucking horrible. She can't stop calling Matt toy, and it, every time I read it, I just throw up in my mouth a little bit. Well, and there's no other side to her. No. Like, she is so steadfast in what she believes. Yeah. That she is boring. Like, she is not a person. She is just a a, a summation of Sanchin culture. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing about her that stands out from that. There's yeah. no element of her that we meet that is anything other than Sanchin Noble. Yes. And so... The, the people who say that she's an interesting character, I always am confused by because she doesn't have a personality. She is just the ultimate smart, creation of what her Sanchin... Co- but but, but yeah. even that is like her job as a noble in her culture. Yeah, otherwise she like, wouldn't be alive. She like. has... She doesn't stand out in any way and there's no second side to her. She comes at every situation the exact same way. Yeah. And so she is so consistent that she's bland. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, she's bland and enjoys slavery. And so, like, I'm waiting for, like, the other side of this She's character. good at stones. Like, <laughs> right, but that, again, like, that is, like... Yeah, no, I, I'm agreeing That is with the you. most boring, like, I'm a noble thing. Even her hobbies are, like, I like raising horses and making women obedient to me. Yeah. Are, like, nobility things. Yeah. Like, she doesn't have... She is the most boring version of a privileged, like... Horse girl. And I do, I do not understand why Matt likes her. It's like he's fucking, like, indoctrinating himself for some reason. He's because like, the well, prophecy, I he have, thinks he has to. I have to marry her, so I'm gonna, like, almost, like, make myself fall in love with her by spending time with her. She's so hot. Oh, wow. It, she's actually more curvy than I thought she was at the beginning. You know, like, yeah, he's yeah. literally, like, rewriting himself so that he can marry this woman without mm-hmm. hating it. Yeah. Because she is literally everything that he hates. Cease Army says, do you think seeing it from her POV would help? No. From Tuan? Because Tuan's POV no, is did. that these women are property and that they should be obedient. Like, I don't know what about seeing a slaver's point of view. We saw would, her point of view. That you think would make me. No, no, but the the, the relationship with Matt. Oh, and this. I, I don't think, yeah. I don't know what. Y- you would expect me to get out of seeing this awful human's point of view that you think would let like help me understand them. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to be on her side. 
She her, she says her, her favorite thing to do in her free time is perpetuate slavery on other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like if you went on if you went on a Tinder date with somebody, you went on a Tinder date and you're like, what are your what are your favorite hobbies? And they're like, crypto. oh, well, I'd be like, oh my god, I I like crypto and I like murdering kittens. You know, yeah, in my yeah. culture, we use kittens as exploding cannon fodder, and so I like to be the one to kill them. It's my favorite thing to do. You'd be like, holy shit! Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> you know, it's 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 so fucked up. Yeah. And you can't just be like, oh, well, in their culture, I guess they like to murder kittens. It also just coming out of his relationship with Tylen, I don't understand what Matt is getting out of this. Well, because she's awful to him. Like, like consi- just he, awful. Here's the thing. We do know from before Matt likes a chase, but only if he thinks that the woman is into him. And she, Tuan yeah. does yeah, not yeah. seem to be in any way. Yeah. Uh, Michael Kioski, thank you for that super chat. It's, uh the storyline is very unfortu on it. You are you're correct. I, I just need there to be some resolution to it. Please that get mad away from her. That doesn't ruin the whole series for me. Because there yeah. there is a world. There is a world where I look back on reading the Wheel of Time as a waste of my time. If it if if, Bold. if 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 the if the end of this series has Matt and Tuan married and Matt justifying Sanchen culture, mm-hmm. I will consider this series a waste of time. I will consider it a, a a black mark on fantasy that we that there is a a massively popular series that essentially takes one of its three main characters and uses them as a device to try and create a narrative that justifies slavery. Yeah, and Matt is already heading down that road. Mm. And we'll get to the moment that I, is the biggest black mark on this section of the reading for me. Mm-hmm. But there, there is a point where if this goes a certain way, I will look at this whole series as as a, as a net negative. Yeah. And and that will be very unfortunate because there's so much that I love about it. Yeah. But I, I, I simply cannot look beyond a story that is watching a character be indoctrinated to the idea that slavery isn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. If if that's what this series, if that's if that's the takeaway from the series, I will be very upset. I hope it's not. I don't think it is. I don't think the series would be as beloved if by the end of it it was like, oh yeah, no, slavery is not that bad. Yeah. Like the, I, I think that there would be a lot different discourse about this series, and so I'm almost positive that oh, it's I, not how it goes. But it is one of those things where I'm like, that's. I'm not saying that's where I think it's going. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying there that is a be. version of the end of this story that I I would never be able to get past. Like, I would never pick up these books again mm-hmm. because I, I would view that as such a negative mm-hmm. on the series. Yeah. If at any point it feels like our main characters get to the point where they're like, you know what? We should call her these women. I, I, I would... Yeah. I, I would be very upset. It, it would yeah. be so disappointing to me. Mm-hmm. And I hope that we don't get there because I, 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 I love so much of this world. And, and like, it's just, it's one of those things where like, there's, there are lines that I cannot cross. Yeah. And, and that, that would be one of them for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Yeah. But anyways, Tuan's got a pretty smile. Uh... So, um, they, uh, they go out for a horse ride. Uh, mm-hmm. Tuan rides like crazy into the woods. Well, they see Tinkers, which yeah. um, all the Tinkers apparently Head to Ebudar. go live under Sanchin rule because totally makes sense. The, yeah, they can't defend yeah. themselves, so they need a structure to uh, defend them for them. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that actually makes total sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, uh, but yeah, Tuan runs off. She like uh, they get a moment alone. Without uh, mm-hmm. Seleucia? Seleucia? I don't even know how to say I call her Seleucia because Felucia from Seleucia. Star Wars. Seleucia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So they get a moment alone with Seleucia, which I thought was actually going to like be something, but then it wasn't really. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, maybe like Tuan is actually going to say something that makes me think that she likes Matt, but she uh, didn't. KP says, you speak of this as if our main characters have any degree of free will rather than being slaves to the prophecy's pattern. If you can't see the difference between those two things, I don't know what to fucking do for you. I, like, literally don't know how to... Yeah. I, I cannot begin to explain the basic, like, elementary level 
issue with your understanding of yes. the difference between Fate a prophecy telling slavery. a character what it has to do and a woman enjoying putting collars on other women and punishing them when they don't do exactly what she wants and forcing people to kneel naked at her throne and feed her berries. If you can't see the difference between those two fucking things, I genuinely do not know how to explain to you what's different. Yeah. Because like that yeah. is that is the most basic shit in the world. Yeah. Those are not the same thing. Being prophesized to fight the devil and being forced to like oil a woman's feet while you're wearing a sheer robe that shows off your body is that like they're not the same fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 very 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 different. Um they're not e- equatable at all. <laughs> like you misunderstood my statement. I I I don't think I did. All right, whatever. I'm moving on. I I, I can't. I, I like so, some of the fucking like defense of the Sanchin is the most. I like. I'm genuinely concerned. It is starting to become a red flag to me that people say that the Wheel of Time is their favorite series of all time. The more I read this book series, and the more like the people who like if people say the Wheel of Time is their favorite book series of all time. No issues. Perfect. Great. There is yeah, legitimately like, a part of my brain that goes either they are. The, there are two kinds of people who love the Wheel of Time. Mm-hmm. There are the people who kind of are like, ah, there's some weird parts, but I love the other parts so much that like I overlook it. Yeah. And then there are the people who go, no, slavery is historically accurate and Tuan's fucking awesome. And those people I'm concerned about. I'm a little bit like, a little bit. that's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. That you're like, no, I, I, I really enjoy all the spanking. It's my favorite thing about the series. Yeah. And, like, I know that's not most people. I know most people are like, yeah, there's too much spanking, but there's so much good that it's worth it. But yeah. there, there are comments from people who are like, no, 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 no. The amount of spanking is not enough. Like, there should be more. I fucking love it. I get hard every time that a woman gets abused in the series. <laughs> and those are the people that I'm like, You're like what oh, the fuck? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And, look, I, I think that there is so much good here. And we talk about this all the time, that the world is so fascinating. Like, uh, like you know, I, I, I am so excited to get to the end. To, to see how it all comes together and what this what what the the point of this journey is right but yeah there are a lot of people who say some very concerning things yeah there mm. I've, I've received some messages from people that I'm legitimately like I you, that's concerning that you that's the way you view the world yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah yep yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's definitely a way to enjoy this series while, like, glazing over certain aspects of it, but we're not here to glaze, so... Here's the thing. If you say... Like, I'm not saying that it's inherently bad to think this is your favorite fantasy series. I'm saying that when someone tells me that it's their favorite fantasy series and I don't know them very well... I'm like, okay, let's I'm dig like, into that a little bit for a that moment. That could either be a green flag that you love Rand... Like, because there, there, there is so much to love. Mm-hmm. But, but there's also, like, there are some people who this is their favorite fantasy series because it is a fantasy from a white man's point of view that has some very flawed worldviews yeah. that some people think are true. Yeah, and like yeah. that is the problem I have with it. Like the people who are like, this, all women are bitches like the Aes Sedai and Wheel of Time. There are people who legitimately think that. There are people who that believe that. Of real life. Yeah. And yeah. like that concerns me. They're like, right? yeah, this is this is how women are, you know, and it's, uh, yeah. And that's obviously not everybody. That is yeah, uh, yeah. Pr- a small, most likely small, but loud group of people um, who like to make themselves heard. And so yeah. that's why we hear it because they, they, they like to let people know that this is what they think. I also think that depending on how it ends, this could be my favorite fantasy series of all time. Could be. And yeah, then, I, but I will also know that when I say that out loud, there are going to be people who are like, yeah, but which parts? Yeah. And that is, I think, totally, absolutely valid. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, so, yeah, they they uh, they ride. The Tinkers chase them because they think Matt's chasing. Uh, They're a bit worried about the women which for is a fair. moment. You know yeah. what? I love fucking love the Tinkers. If you see a man chasing a woman and she seems scared. You bring your dogs. You, 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 you separate the man from the woman. They literally do, like, everything you're supposed to do. <laughs> They, in like they, a bar situation? They calmly separate the man and the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the women check on the woman, make sure everything's okay. And yeah. they distract the man with idle chatter until they make sure that everything's fine. Yeah. Like, this is literally like a textbook moment of what you should do in this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, Tinkers. Appreciate I, you. Aram concerns me, but the rest of those Tinkers, man, they're good people. Mm-hmm. I, I love them on the show. I love them in the books. Tinkers have never done anything wrong. And uh, we'll get to it, but the way the parent defends the Tinkers in that chapter... Fucking Great. rad. Love it. The Tinkers, love them. Yeah. They are the salve I need in a two-on chapter, truly. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh. Okay. Thankfully, that was empty. Um, Knife of Dreams chapter 10, a village in uh, Shiota. Um, mm. 
next day, uh, Matt and Tuan have started riding next to each other. Uh, they they ride and ride and ride and ride. Um, Tuan has a weird... Uh, uh, Matt, Matt, these ravens fly by, and Matt is like, yeah, they're the eyes of the Dark One. And Tuan's like, ha, 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 that's very stupid. You fucking idiot. Uh, do you believe children's tales like that if you sleep on old Hobbs Hill under a full moon, then snakes will give you true answers to three questions, or that foxes steal people's skins and take the nourishment from food so you can starve to death while eating your fill? And Matt is like, oh, yeah, that happened to me, actually. <laughs> I was there. I was Matt there is like, that. I think I've done all of those that, things. That one was about me. <laughs> yeah, I, that was like very like on the nose. It is hilarious to me that Tuan is like, you're so dumb. Don't put your hat on the table. I'm oh, like, yeah. She's fucking ridiculous. Oh God. It's great. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, those are the things that make me chuckle because I'm like, ah, self-awareness. Not everybody has it. Yeah, no. Um, um um, most of the characters in the Wheel of Time don't. Self-awareness is not what the series is known for. Uh-huh. Uh, so, um, they, 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 this basically is like uh, mostly just a chapter of Matt trying to like hit on Tuan until they come upon uh, this weird village uh, and on the other side of the village, a peddler is coming at them and uh, suddenly there's cobblestones and Matt's weird memory shit it's makes like, him remember oh. that this town was... A cobblestone town was here a long time ago but now it's not yeah. uh and for the first time guys i've been saying that like the dead coming back is kind of like pointless up until now because mm-hmm. it doesn't affect anything people just see it they disappear it's like been like <laughs> and suddenly the wheel of time becomes a horror novel <laughs> yes and it's really fucking cool yeah this peddler starts riding into this town and gets dragged down into the earth slowly slowly they watch him scream and like flail around, they try all to just escape, kind of they're th- like there's nothing they can do, and like it is, like it is crazy. I'm glad Oliver didn't see that. It is, it is such a cool moment when Robert Jordan writes horror stuff. Like when he first introduced that town in the last book. When Robert Jordan writes horror stuff, he does such a good job. Yeah. And this cha- like I this agree. section was fucking rad. Yeah. Like I really loved it. I. I and, and even getting into Val and Luca, right? Val and Luca gives this like insane, passionate speech about the beauty of Cain. I literally and... need you to be Val and Luca. I know, right? Like, I was reading this and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, okay, cast nerdy already. Like, I, I would love it because this is this this moment was made for me. It was so well done. He becomes a DM. He this yeah, is yeah. his Matt Mercer moment. This is <laughs> he's he's like explaining like the the this continent uh... and why they need to go on mm-hmm. and it's and. Uh, uh, what I love about it is that his character is so motivated by greed mm-hmm. that he does the right thing here for for everybody. Own, yeah, yeah, right for for everybody involved. Mm-hmm. Moving forward is the right thing. And as the readers, we know that these miasmas, these bubbles of evil, or whatever they are, they, they do tend to come and go. Yeah. Um. And so Valenuka is so in character here that it like. Once we get past the initial two on stuff at the beginning of the chapter, the the the, the village and then the Val Luca shit is so fucking good that I just loved it. Like I was like, oh yeah, let's go. He, his descriptions and the the way that Tom gets like a little bit affronted by Tom how like, good Val Luca's doing. He's fine. I get. I guess. Like he doesn't okay. know the high chant though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Tom. Tom is a little jealous. But also, Tom. I, I the, the the moment where Tom is like, "Hey, I will bet you a, a gold coin." Mm-hmm. And or, or Matt says that, and Tom's like, "Sure, I know. I know what it's like to turn a crowd because I've done it before. They're turning." And I was like, "Oh, Tom, you're a jealous little bitch in this moment. You're it's, being a little salty about it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's it's great. Uh, it's great, M- monkey. Don't worry. Uh, Nerdy has good calves, so he's cast immediately. Mm, I need to work on them. I did them <laughs> yesterday. My calves are so sore today from my workout yesterday, but. Cats are a bitch when they're sore. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, so they 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 do decide to keep going. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, they um, but that's kind of the end of it. Yeah, it takes a minute. But Val and Luca, them. Val and Luca is like, no, 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 we're doing this, and they do. And then, oh my god, I don't think I screenshotted it. Wait a second. How the fuck am I gonna find it? I want to read the letter because we got to talk about the letter. This oh, is like the whole thing. I mean, I can. I can find it pretty quick here because it's it's italicized. Yeah. Oh, found it. How did you no, find wait. it faster than me? Nope, that's the song. Never mind. Um, all right. <clears throat> so then that night, they're sitting around, and Tom is reading his letter, and Matt finally asks about it. Yep. 
And uh, this is the letter from Moiraine, and we're going to discuss it. Because, oh boy. This story, uh, it took them um, uh, four chapters of just Matt riding around with Tuan. But guys, the plot, the plot is back. <laughs> Here's an introduction to the plot of what the book is going to be. Yeah. I hope. Or maybe next book. Or two books from now. Or the final book. Who knows? Mm -hmm. My dearest Tom, there are many words I would like to write to you. Words from my heart. But I have put this off because I know that I must. And now there is little time. There are many things I cannot tell you lest I bring disaster. But what I can, I will. Heed carefully what I say. In a short while, I will go down to the docks. And there I will confront Lanfear. How can I know that? That secret belongs to others. Suffice it that I know, and that that foreknowledge stand as proof for the rest of what I say. Now, this is a weird paragraph to me. Okay. Because she's like, I can't tell you because that knowledge belongs to others. It, that other person is Matt, and um, he's going to bring you... Like, I, if she was like, the elf and Elfin told me, and they're holding me captive right now. Like, it's very strange that she's like, I can't tell you how I know this, but I'm going to tell you to come here. I mean, yeah, I didn't find that that strange. I just don't know who the secret belongs to. It's her secret. She went there. I, I I don't really know who. Like it's the that secret Maybe belongs she's to others. It belongs to the Elfin Elfin, but I I don't know why that would be. Right. Like I don't know who she's hiding the secret for. Or maybe if the, she's like if the letter gets into the wrong hands. Oh no, that's what it is. She. Oh no 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 no. That's it's it, 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 the secret doesn't belong to others. She doesn't want other people. If someone were to find the letter, to know where she is, because she even says like she doesn't tell. It's that Matt knows where I am. Right. Uh I think she. I think the secret is. It's the wise ones. No, she doesn't go to Ruidian. She goes through the Terangriel. No, she goes through the Ruidian, but she also goes through the Terangriel. Yeah, it was the Terangriel that Matt also went through. Oh no! But she saw this future. Oh, okay. I understand. Oh, I thought she saw this future from the Terangriel, not from Ruidian. Right, 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 right. I, I immediately went to the Terangrel as well, but no, she also does go through the rings in Ruidian. Right. Okay. So that makes sense. You know what? Thanks, chat. That actually clears that up. Okay. Um, next yeah. paragraph. When you receive this, you will be told that I am dead. All will believe that. I am not dead. Shocked. <laughs> Guys. I will be honest. I kind of wish... Fucking called it. I kind of wish the Sindane reveal hadn't happened yet. Yeah. The 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 Sindane being Landfear reveal takes a little bit of the edge off of this because like you're like oh if Landfear is alive then obviously Moraine is yeah so I kind of wish that we still didn't know I I wish that the Sindane reveal happened after this because I think that this is a better reveal than how we found out about Landfear yeah I, I think agree. that this would have been the better of the two but it, it is what it is yeah um it also may be that you and Matt Cawthon and another man I do not know will try and rescue me may I say because it may be that you will not or cannot. Moraine, you got you got to work on your sentences. <laughs> may, comma, I say because it may be that you will not or cannot, comma, or because Matt may refuse, is is the most like complicated way of writing a very simple thought. Yeah, that's nobility, though. You know what I mean? They make it sound more complicated than it actually is. For I know, the but sake the double of... comma, like like there, oh, there's I... a way to do this. I, I just no, no, but it's it's it's. For her character. I know, but the rest of the letter is written so well. It's the only sentence that stands out for its grammar. Um, he does not hold me in the affection you seem to, and he has his reasons, which he no doubt thinks are good. If you try, it must be only you and Matt and one other. More will mean death for all. Fewer will mean death for all. Even if you come only with Matt and one other, death may also come. I've seen you try and die, one or two or all three. I have seen myself die in the attempt. Yeah. I've seen all of us live and die as captives. Great. All right. God love captivity in the wheel of time. Um, and then the rest of it's just like a little bit more. Um, we, uh, if you see Lan again, tell him that all of this is for the best. Wish him I wish him all the happiness with Nynaeve. Love remember, that. Remember the game of snakes and foxes. Yeah, which you always lose, um, which is fun. They're, they, you always lose that game, so that's going to be great. I wish I knew what I had a better understanding of snakes and foxes now. It's snakes and ladders. That's but, what I thought it was. But, but you can't win. But no, it's not snakes and ladders because you can't have the one touching the other one. What? Yeah, you can't have the one line. You can't have the. You can't cross the streams. Uh, Michael Kioski, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Moraine remembered the cannot. 
<laughs> Thank I love you. that. Thank that you, is only for our expanse fans. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I first, am excited okay, for this. At first, I thought it was snakes and ladders as well, but then there was something about like you can't. It, you, it's it's, but it's not snakes and ladders. It's not exactly snakes and ladders, but like. It's a board where the snakes try and get you on the board. Like it, it's very similar, isn't the, it? I I thought maybe it was like worm, like the like or snake, the game snake, where you like get longer and longer and longer, and you can't like touch your own tail. But uh, may, maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's that's, not described enough for me to know. That's exactly what I'm what saying. It is. I wish we had a bit more information on the game mm -hmm. at this point, um, because that yeah, that would definitely clear things up, but. Yeah. Someone made snakes and foxes. Okay, that's pretty rad. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, th this letter just is. It's so necessary at this point. Like that. This plot needed a plot so bad. It needed a purpose so bad. And Maureen gives it to them. I, I don't know when they're gonna get to it, mm -hmm. but at least now there's a goal. Like giving Matt a goal has so. It's been so long since he's had one that wasn't just like. Really, like, even, like, Escape from Thailand isn't, like, his, isn't, like, a lot of plot for him. Yeah. Because he was just stuck in this situation, and now he's stuck in this situation. And, like, giving him something he can move towards instead of just, like, this, like, weird, like, I need to get out of this immediate circumstance, but then beyond that, I don't know. This is why we always need Moraine. Yeah, yeah. Moraine is the key to the Wheel of Time. <laughs> Use the Kobayashi Maru to beat it. I love that, MJ. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I just, I, 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 this was great. The letter's so, the letter's delightful. The fact that Tom has just been reading it over and over and over again, not knowing what to do about it, says so much about him and, uh, you know, my dearest Tom. Like, I know. You know, it's a pretty intimate so beginning. Cute. Um, and I just think like I hope they end up happy and alive together. You think they're together? Why not? I don't know. They're very alike in important ways, and also like you know, like Tom deserves a little bit of happiness. Like he's kind of got the shit end of the stick a lot. Do you lot. think she bonds him as her new warder? As a warder, no. That might fix his knee. Well, it, it might. It might. Yeah. But also, Moraine is not a green, so I don't know if she would like be intimate with her warder in that way. I think maybe they just, like, retire together and, like, go, uh, I don't know, own a farm somewhere. Happy. Um, I do love, uh, so they read the letter, and Matt's like, well, can't do it. I don't know where she is. And then uh, she's, he's like, I, I don't know how to get to the Elfin Elfin. And then Olver's like, the Tower of Genji. And Matt's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, the Tower of Genji. Do you know where that is? And he's like, no, I don't. No. And then uh, Noel's like, Oh, that's a shame, because you'd think you would know where this giant, like, tower is that's in the middle of Andor, and everybody would know it's there. Like, this would be a, f there's a fucking, everyone would know where it is. Yeah, they put this together pretty fast. They're like, oh, this is the tower, this is where it is, Over's like, you have to draw this symbol on it, and you're good. Well, but also, okay, like, but, but also they're like, Jane Farstrader has never seen it before. It is in the middle of the country. Like, it is a 200-foot-tall tower with no doors. Everybody would know where it was. Like, true. The, people would talk about it for hundreds of miles. That's, you know what, that's it's not, true. It's not in the, it's not like in some faraway land. It is like a day's ride from Camelin. Yeah, they, they, they sail by it. Like they're it's, like, oh, shiny tower. It isn't, it isn't, yeah, it's not like it's like in the blight somewhere. Yeah, no, we've literally seen it. They find it a day at, but, but between Shadar Lagoth and Camelin. <laughs> Matt leaves the two rivers for the first time and is like, oh, that tower. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it, and they're like, it's the one thing Jane Farstrider never saw. And I'm like, how the fuck did he miss it? I know. It's a 200 foot tall tower <laughs> all in to Andor. Is, all you had to do is sail past Whitebridge, like... It's just, it's it's so, th that, that this got weird to me because I was like, what do you mean it's hard to find? They accidentally yeah. stumbled upon it 12 book, twelve chapters into the first book. Yeah, anyone who had sailed on that river would have seen this gleaming tower, especially in the sunlight. It would be so, I, like, everyone would know, like, well, not everyone on Earth, but, like, everyone oh. in Andor would know about the giant tower that's, like, a little bit down the river from Camelin. Yeah, yeah. The one thing is that, I, like, I guess only Brigitte knows how to get in. Because at first I was like, oh, yeah, and Over just knows how to get in it right away. But then I was like, okay, wait, Brigitte is literally, like, an like an anomaly, right? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. So that actually makes sense. But, yeah, yeah, I love that the tower's just there. Yeah. Just there. Yeah, it's just, it, it's one of those weird things where they're like, I, I don't know how we could ever find that. And I'm like... 
It's a good thing you that, that you did. Yeah. Yeah, it's just funny that no one ever put together this, like, solid, shiny tower. With no doors, as being the solid, shiny tower with no doors. With no doors, yeah, yeah. Which is, is fine. It's just funny that our characters see it immediately. <laughs> and it's uh, it's visible from a major trade route. How could but... we ever find it? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas, thank you for that super chat. Remember, it gets darkest right before the dawn. <sighs> We're getting there. Um, Chris getting Harper there. says they don't know the name of the tower. It's just a relic of an earlier age to everyone else. But, 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 yeah. but my point is that if Jane Farstrider's whole thing is going around visiting the relics from earlier ages, like that's his whole bit, right? Then this is one of the things that he would go visit. Because everybody who rides that river would be like, yeah, there's the crazy tower that's so fucking weird. You would think that there would be like a town of weird archaeologists around it who just want to figure it out. You would think that there would be like a camp of hunters for the horn who live there who like assume that it is where the horn is. Big shiny tower, like, gotta have a horn There's in it. so, it is so strange to me that there's this like piece of magic in the middle of the largest kingdom in the con in the nation or in the, mm -hmm. in the continent that is so bizarre and so strange. Yeah. And then when it comes up again, people are like, yeah, but no one ever found the dang thing, the tall shower tower with no entrances. And it is so close. Jane Farboder, he is not. You're right. You're right. He did not ride a he boat. He doesn't like ships. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is funny. It, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but it just was, it's just silly that it's like on a major like sea trade route and yeah, yeah. not a lot of people know about it. It, it, it. Yeah, it is that, it is that it is in Andor. If it was anywhere else, I would get it. It's well, like this or, weird tower like far away, but or, it's not that far away. Or if it was like near Shadar Lagoth, right? It wasn't along the river. If they had seen it like... And never avoid Shadar Lagoth so people miss it. If yeah, they, yeah. yeah, if they had seen it in the, the literal middle of nowhere, then that would make sense to me. But yeah, the fact that they just see it from like a major route is just very funny. Orchid Eater says, why would people assume it's magic? It's a 200 foot tall shiny tower with no doors. I, I think I that would people would look at it and be like, hey, that's probably... If magic didn't exist, I would still it, think it, it was magic. For, for a character like Jane, who whose like whole thing is trying to figure out the prophecies of the dragon and looking at relics of the past. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's 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 very strange to me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It just was funny. In the reading of it, I was like, this is hilarious that these people are like, we're never going to find this tower that's in the middle of nowhere. And Matt's like, oh, no, no, it's it's actually nearby. Yeah. It's yeah, actually, yeah. We, could, we could get there like in a month. Like it's not it's not a crazy distance from where we currently are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't even need to travel. Like they could ride a horse to it in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And they will. Yeah. Uh Domen was a smuggler, maybe it wasn't a major route. It's a river. Like regardless, it's it's still it like It goes a... right through Whitebridge. So yeah, I yeah. feel like it feels Oh, major. it is the river through Whitebridge. No, it, it is. is a pretty major route. Yeah. Uh Ricardo, thank you for that super chat. The giant steel phallic structure nobody talks about is not hinting at anything, right? Uh, love you guys. Can't wait to meet up at Jordan Con. Let's fucking go. I can't wait for Jordan Con. We're going to have a blast. Me too. Yeah. If y'all have a Siswai Mommy beanie, bring it. We're going to get or a Or an Arc beanie. We're going to do it. We're going to do a beanie pick. Beanie with photo. With everybody at, on probably like the Friday or Saturday. I haven't heard back from them though. I've been trying to get like a space there or something and they're, um, yeah, we wanna, they're difficult to get in contact with. We, yeah, we want to host something, and we, we have not heard back from them. Which... Yeah, we're trying to figure that out. We might do, like, a bar thing or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Sean Carroll to... coming in with the wrong opinion. Um, <laughs> thank you hey now. for engaging with the content, though. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. Oh, God. Anyway, no, it was just funny. I, I was reading you. it, and I was like, well, it's convenient. How convenient that Matt Ardine has seen the thing. Yeah. And that it's not that far from where they are right now. I almost wish it was like a mirage tower that only appeared like at certain times of the day. I mean, it might be. And like that reveal would be interesting. Oh, maybe. But I but, guess but Doman... But Doman, Doman kind of says like, oh yeah, that's that weird tower that's always there. Yeah, yeah. Because it, cause it's not like everyone on the boat is weird about it. Matt and Rand are like, what the fuck is that? And Doman's like, yeah, there's no end to it. It's everyone just always there. Everyone on the there. boat is just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no one's like, whoa, because it, it's the first time they've seen it. If, if Doman had been like, that's never been there before. How strange? It would be completely different. But it's because the people on the boat are like, oh, yeah, no, no, we know what that is. It's always there. Yeah. But Doman's like, I've sailed by that thing a million times. It's like, it, I've sailed by it so much it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah. That that ruins the like idea of it being a mirage tower. Yeah. Yeah. Unless Doman Doman has like magic eyes or something. I don't know. <laughs> magic eyes. Um because sailor sailors are not notorious for telling stories. 
Fair, yeah. Um, uh, Rantamore, we might be at WatCon this year. This uh, We don't know yet. When's that, July? July, yeah. It would be uh, right before the thing. Yeah, I don't Guys, know. Guys, come that. back on my birthday to find out what the thing is. Yeah, there's a thing. There's a thing. Oh, also, we're going to be live on Twitch tomorrow if you want to come hang out. Yeah, we're going to be building a Lego set that you guys might like. So um, yeah. come hang out on Clarus's Twitch channel tomorrow. I'll be on her channel the whole time. Yeah, come It's find very out. exciting. I haven't been on Twitch in forever. Yeah, come find out what we're building. It's going yeah. to be good. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, chapter 11, A Hell in Madarin. Um, wait, no. I think I... This is, when did that happen in chapter 10? Yeah, the village... Um, no, no, no. I want to talk about... Um, did we skip over the whole... Um, which? What? Oh, my God. Sorry. In chapter 9, we skipped over the whole thing. I thought that was at the end of chapter 10. At the end of chapter 9, we skipped over a big thing. Which thing? The, the Adam moment. Oh, I thought it was after that as well. Yeah, I, I have the order oh, yeah. confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, Matt goes to visit uh, uh, Tuon, and uh, there's the, the Aes Sedai have found out that she's a high lady, and so they're pestering her, uh, but she's ignoring them. And um, so, uh, in a flash, a literal flash, uh, Solution manages to... She becomes a flash. ...throw Adams on... All three food, of the food, Aes Sedai. Food. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Tuan starts using the uh, cuffs to show them pain uh, and then show them pleasure. It's very fucking weird. And uh, Matt manages to talk her down, kind of, uh, and he unlinks them. Tuan tries to have the Aes Sedai channel at him to stop him. Uh, but, of course, his foxhead medallion stops that. And... Um, the, he unbuckles them and convinces them all to stop fighting each other and convinces Tuan to let him have the Adams to not do anything against the Aes Sedai anymore. Yes. Uh, and then he goes he out. He goes and buries them. And he buries them. And then the next morning, spends the morning ride trying to make her laugh because uh, he wants her to laugh. Mm. How uh, how did yeah. you like this um, very uncomfortable scene? Very uncomfortably. Um yeah, no, not 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 a friend. It just made her like. Wor- I already am like, oh god, Tuan, and this just like made it like worse in my eyes. And yeah, the fact that Solusha it literally turns into the Flash and it's like, bam, bam, bam. We know that I said yeah. I can channel instantly. Yes. And so, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's one of those things. Where I'm like, I don't really understand the logistics of how this happened. But, Especially uh, in this, like, small yikes. ass. Yeah. Like, like, the fact that Solution was able to get around people in this, like, tiny fucking cart to do this is yeah, kind of insane. because not only is Tuan and Solution in there, and then the three Aes Sedai, plus Matt, plus Oliver, plus Noel, plus an, a Mistress Anon, I think is yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Like, There's it's literally crowded. nine people in this fucking little, like, cabin. It's very crowded. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... It, yeah, it, it was... It, 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 it was awkward. Didn't like it. I don't like Tuan. Um, well, and this this moment, I really was disappointed in Matt. Th- this whole thing really, this this whole thing made me very disappointed in Matt because his response, I, I want to read this because I took a picture. I put this in the Discord last night because I was really struggling with it and I'm still struggling with it, honestly. Because um, he's looking at her as she's doing this. As she's, she she's like literally forcing Jolene to, to, um, to embrace Sidar. And he looks at her and he says, and his, he thinks, obedience? She looked a bloody leopard staring at three tethered gro- goats and strangely more beautiful than ever. And so it's not even that Matt is trying to make things worth, work with Tuan because of the prophecy, but in the text, he finds her more attractive while she is forcing her will on these women against their will. Then at any other point, the most attractive he has ever seen her is when she is perpetuating slavery. Yeah. And it's such a disgusting sentence to me. It is such it it, it, it diminishes Matt's character so much. Yeah. That I, I was like legitimately like upset reading this. Like I was like, what the fuck? What is Robert Jordan trying to do with Matt as a character here? I I, I can't see it. I, I don't get what I was trying to what he wants me to take away about this character who I love. 
right? Yeah. Who I, I genuinely thought was the heart of this series for so long. Yes. And now you give me this sentence where he's like, oh my God, look at how beautiful she is when she's enslaving these women. And yes, he does the right thing. I'm not saying that he doesn't. He, un, he unadoms them, but he doesn't yeah. push back on her. He he spends yeah. the next morning trying to make her smile and laugh. He, he literally gives her permission to continue to think the way that she thinks because even though he says no to her lightly he then says but i can still love you despite that and it is so yeah i don't know about you guys but for me it's kind of a deal breaker uh (laughs) but this is where it crosses the line from matt is dealing with prophecy to matt is matt thinks that she's more beautiful in this moment because she is being a slaver. Like, that in her perpetuating the evil of slavery... He's like, wow, she's so hot. The force of will she has while doing that is more attractive than she usually is. Yeah. And that, to me, is... it's, it's It's so hard for me to be on board with this character who I adore... In Matt, obviously. I fucking hate Tuan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and everything that Tuan represents in terms of Robert Jordan's writing. But, but like, that line was... It's tough. Yeah. It's it's really tough. Yeah, it's it, it's it's gross. It's gross. It yeah, Matt, we would we would like uh, that's why I'm really glad for this letter because I Tuan obviously can't go with them because Morgan Thank is God. like only three uh, no, people can or go. Tuan goes with them and dies. Gross. Wouldn't that right. be fantastic? <laughs> I you know what I want? I want the moment where Tuan realizes that her whole family's dead. I want it. Oh, I want God, I yeah. want and then I want her to die. I want the moment where Tuan realizes that she's wrong. <laughs> I, I would love that more, but, like, I, I, I don't see how. Yeah. Like, she as a character, she's so fucking... Tuan literally represents everything that Matt hates, and it's just yes. wild to me that he's it's so head over everything heels. Everything he's complained about the entire time. She's a woman who can channel. She's nobility. She's she's rude. It, like, she, has this, she treats him the same way Nynaeve treated him. Everything in this... All of these books, we've learned about this character. What he likes in a woman is when she likes him back, when she's kind to him, when she shows that she's interested in him. All of the things, all of, even like the kind of gross stuff about how he likes when they're a little bit thicker, which like, he doesn't phrase the best always, but like that is a part of his character. All of those things go out the window for this character. And I can't understand why she's the fucking worst. And it feels like Robert Jordan wanting to try and be like, well, not all slavers are bad. And like, the problem is that like, I don't yeah. want to think that that's what he's trying to say here, but it's the only I thing I can get not. out of it. Yeah, I hope I hope not. Because in the moment where she's doing the slavery, it, she's more beautiful. She's more beautiful than than ever, and, and like it's just it's fucked. Yeah, and I love Matt. I, I I know. And this line, like it literally, like I I stopped reading for a good two hours, and I just it's threw it rough. on Discord and had a conversation on the Discord with people last night because I couldn't keep going. Like this stopped me. From continuing my reading. Yeah. Because I, I I couldn't get past this sentence for a while. And I, I don't know how I will ever get back to liking Matt now. I really yeah. don't. Like, he, he I, I don't know how to find love for this character in my heart after the sentence. And it's such a shame. It, it kills me that I, I've had this moment with him. Yeah. Because I, I, I loved him so much. Yeah, I'm hoping that he gets away from her and does a little bit of thinking Without the influence of, like, the prophecy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, wait a fucking second. Um, Jason, welcome to the nerd table. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Um, Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm hoping that, like, Matt realizes how kind of fucked up this whole situation is. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it, yeah, him being like, God, she's so hot when she's enslaving people is really weird. Um, it's, it's, it's really weird. Uh, KP says, I don't think Matt has a choice here. He's bound by prophecy or the pattern. He does he, to to marry yeah. her, yes, but not to like her, not to not to find this attractive. Right? Yeah, like I said, it's like he's like um, gaslighting himself into liking her because he knows that they're going to be married, and like I, I still think that that's fucked up. Yeah, like I'm just I don't I don't I don't want it. It was just very disappointing. It it really um, yeah it uh, it ruined Matt as a character for me in a way that um, I. Uh, much like the and look like the Egwene moment in book four ruined Egwene for me for a while. Yeah, it took a long time for me to be able to get back on board with Egwene. Yeah, and even now, like I still struggle with her. She's not my favorite character, but um, the, the her moment with Nynaeve was a similar moment to this where I it, it threw me off of this character so much. Yeah, um, and this is again this is the same thing, uh, and I just I I hated this. Uh, it made me very sad. 
um, as I'm sure the people in the Discord saw last night. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this storyline moving forward because it is it is ruining everything else. I really like everything else in Knife of Dreams so far. Other than there's some like women abuse that we talked about last week. Like there, there's like, definitely right, problems this again, with yeah. this book that I don't love. But like yeah. the, the narrative of this book is so much better. And we're getting back to what I love about the Wheel of Time. Except with the Matt storyline, which is just, I, I it, it makes me want to skip any chapter he's in. Genuinely. And yeah. that would make me miss great stuff like the Moraine letter and like uh, these other things that that are great. But well, like this two-on relationship is fucking gross. Now finally he has a motive and like a thing to do. But yeah, for a long time it was like, all right, just keep traveling with the circus. Yeah. Um, Nicholas, thank you for that super chat. Nicholas, um, thank you. <laughs> Uh, nerdy, if you don't find Claris on in full dominatrix outfit walking on a leash, her slave, you are not the man I thought. But that's consensual. That is like not the same. It's not thing the same thing in any way. Consensual, like, consensual BDSM is incredibly fun for both parties, and yes. everybody loves it. Yes. I've I've worn a leash sexually. Here's it's the thing. awesome. Matt is turned on in this scene while fucking Teslin is sobbing yes. and screaming. There is a woman That's crying not sexual. for fear of her life. Yeah. That yeah. isn't a sexual moment and there's no consent involved. Yeah. If you if you engage in BDSM consensually, power to you. It's very fun. Great. Try awesome. being married for a few years. You're going to try some weird shit. Yeah. But you do it as a partnership. You don't do it from the top down. Yeah and, yeah, yeah, and the one thing, and look, like this isn't a sex podcast, but we talk about a lot of sex on it. So I'm going to give some sex advice here. The most important person mm -hmm. in a BDSM relationship is the bottom, is the sub. They yeah. have the most power in every B, every healthy BDSM situation. Any situation where the dom has the most power between the two of them yeah. is inherently unhealthy. Yes. There has to be the ultimate power lies with the sub in that they have to be able to stop it at any time mm -hmm. and they have to be in control of what their limits are. As soon as that control flips to the other person, as soon as the other person is controlling what the limits are, you are in an inherently unhealthy and toxic situation yes. that is bad for bad. both people. Yes. Right? Yes. It may feel it's like it's dangerous. great for the dom. It's bad for both people. Yeah. Even in the most extreme BDSM situation where the sub says, I am comfortable with everything, they're still setting the limit. Yeah. They're setting the limit by saying everything is everything is open until obviously I say it, it's not. Mm -hmm. If you do not have that kind of dynamic, then you have to evaluate how safe the situation you're in is. Yes. Because one person is going to control somebody else's limits and that's never going to end well. Yes. 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 Look, consent <laughs> is vital. And you can find beauty in a dominatrix. I dated a dominatrix. It was fun. We had a lot of, we had great sex. It was awesome. Yeah. But I always knew that I was safe in that room. Yes. I never felt... And nobody in this room is safe. Yeah. N nobody. Like, I, I emphasize, Teslin is screaming. Like, yeah. in fear of her life. She She's is, sobbing. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. the fact that Matt can ignore that and yeah. be turned on by Tuan in this moment is really gross. Like the, and that he can wake up the next morning and be like, I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go juggle for her. And I, he no. literally is like a dancing monkey for her the next morning. If I, okay. for like, I would not speak to her for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> I would kick her out of the circus. She can walk back to fucking Abu Dhar. Yeah. And I'm never thinking about her again. I'm not going to kill her because like I don't think that I could kill a woman. Yeah. But like I'm never speaking to that person again. Yeah. Like for example, if I witnessed you like make somebody like cry and be uncomfortable, yeah. I would be uncomfortable with you the next day. I wouldn't go on like everything was fine and dandy. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, yo, not You cool. wouldn't make up with me the next day. You would fight me that night. I, yeah, okay. You, not would, the you, next would, day, you right. would stand up to me in right. that moment. I would be like, what the actual yeah, fuck? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the fact that Matt is like, yeah, no, it's totally fine. No big deal. No problems. I'm just going to like turn on the blinders. It's bleh. It's gross. Um, James Ross, thank you for that super chat. I promise this gets better. Keep going, guys. As a married guy, I guess I should ask Nerdy for sex advice more often. Hey, you know, the, you, we, we like to have fun. I've we, done a lot of weird shit. So. I, I wouldn't say like we're professionals. There's a like, reason why uh, we were like, yeah, of course we'll take an Adam and Eve sponsorship. Look at who, look at our content. Yeah. Um, of course we will. Uh, yeah. Christian Rapper says, you guys are really projecting way too much on Matt in that scene. It's his point of view. I'm not projecting anything. It's what he's thinking. It's what he, I'm just reading yeah. his words. Like, I don't, I can't project onto him. The, the, the line is, she's never been more beautiful. Like, I, I don't know how I'm projecting. I'm just reading to you. Yeah. And strangely, more beautiful than ever. Like, I don't. I can't project that, that. That's just what. That's what Robert Jordan wrote him thinking. Yeah. Is that in this moment where Tesla is fucking sobbing, Matt is like, oh, God damn, it's wow. Tuan's really hot when she does this. 
Yeah. Maybe I should That's step in. So ick. Like uh, And so like I like I I I understand. We're going to move on, but like mm-hmm, I understand mm-hmm. that like not everyone agrees with us, but like at least consider what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Mhm. Yeah. Moving on. I I I thought that that was like afterwards, but uh yeah. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable for everybody involved. <laughs> Except Tuan. Well, yeah, Tuan, Tuan, Tuan does was whatever like, the fuck Tuan wants because Tuan can. Yeah. Chapter 11. We did chapter 10. Chapter 11. Luca, uh, he is riding into Madarin, and Tuan is like, yo, I want to go to a hell, which is apparently like a really rough bar. Uh, and Matt is like, fuck no. Well, that's so dumb. You're so hot. I'll have to fight people. Um, yeah. And she's like, no, we're going. And Tom is like, all right, I'll take, I'll, I'll take him to a hell. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But he rolls high enough on his deception check, so they get away with it. Um, and uh, they go to a hell. And mm-hmm. it's actually a really interesting town. I, I like the um, I like the way this town is set up where they they do all of their bartering after they've been drinking. So, yeah. like, what kind of deal you get depends on how well you can hold your liquor. Yeah. It or seems how well like you would, can pretend to hold your liquor. It, it seems like a town that is, like, built to raise alcoholism. Yeah. Like... Yeah, I'm like, this does not seem healthy, but it seems realistic. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I really actually, I love the way that this plays out. I, I enjoyed Matt. Um, I, this display of Matt's luck at the gambling table is fun because it shows that he's always lucky. Even, he doesn't always win, though. Yeah. And I thought that it was uh, when, you know, he, he keeps rolling rolling 14s and winning and winning and winning and winning. Mm-hmm. And then at the moment where the deck is stacked, it looks like the casino is going to beat the shit out of him in the back room for, you know, counting cards. Yeah, um, we've yeah. all seen 21, right? It's a good movie. I, I actually, it's a guilty pleasure film of mine. Uh, I really mm-hmm. do quite like it. Um, right. It's about counting cards and casinos, playing blackjack. Oh, um, I was sorry. I was getting confused with the movie 23. No, twenty one. It's um, like okay. What it's what's his face from uh, from uh, across the universe? Um, I don't remember. Is Kevin Spacey in it? Oh, he might. It might be Kevin Spacey. I can't remember who the teacher. Wait, is Wait, I it. think I've actually seen that movie. Is it called Twenty One? Yeah, where he like gets hired. He goes to Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a fun movie. Is it Kevin Spacey? Oh my god! Yeah, Jim Sturgis, Kate Bosworth. It's a good movie. Um, unfortunately, Kevin Spacey's in it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do, I like that film a lot. But mm-hmm. Matt has the same, mo- there's a similar moment in 21, which is why it made me think of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he realizes that the woman is like checking him out and thinks that he's cheating. Mm-hmm. And so he rolls dark eye, dark one's eyes, all ones. Yeah. Um, and uh, he loses all but one coin. He also bought everyone around with his winnings. Smart. When, when he was winning. Yeah. And, and Tuan is like, I guess you're not always lucky. And he's like, nah, that was the luckiest role I've ever had. And that line, it was just a great line. Because I yeah. was like, oh, like this shows Matt's luck goes beyond. Um, uh, Matt's Matt's luck goes beyond. Wait, what? It's Kevin Spacey. And the actual story is based on an Asian guy's experience. Wait, they cast Jim Sturgis as an Asian man? That's fucking weird. All right. Cool. Well, now I feel weirder about that movie that I thought I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Anyways. Can we remake it, but with... Um, with Lan Mandragoran? No. Uh, oh, my God. Why am I blinking on his name? From WandaVision. From WandaVision? Randall? Is his name Randall? Oh, the... the Jimmy... Not cop, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But him and... <laughs> But I as his character that. from WandaVision, counting cards yeah. <laughs> and doing card little card tricks. Anyway. That, um, would, that would be rad. Yeah. 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 Uh, so then uh, they they managed to get out of the hell uh, thinking, oh, we're not going to get attacked. Nope. They immediately get attacked. <laughs> because, guys, remember at the beginning of this podcast today when I was like, the Forsaken, the Forsaken. did it. They actually said they were going to do something and followed through right away. Yeah. They try and kill Matt. Yep. And um, Matt... Well, and that's why that guy leaves the table, right? Yeah. yeah. He, like, sees Matt, and he's like, okay, I gotta go. And they're yeah. like, okay, that's fucking weird. And I was like, oh, no, there's something something's fishy's going on here. It was... So there's, like, 24 dark friends or something? Yeah. It was so fun Holy to shit. see the Forsaken's plans <laughs> not work, obviously, but, like, almost work, mm-hmm. and, like, play out in a way that makes... Like, like their plan here makes sense and, and should succeed. 
Yeah, Matt but... and Perrin are just like god tier, and Tom and Tamirin and Tuan are they don't know about T- Tom and Tuan being god tier fighters as well, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. but like, like they're like sending an actual full on like strike force at these people while they're alone with only two or three people with them. Like this was like this was this was the good shit. This was villains doing villainish thing. I was like, the Forsaken haven't like acted like this in so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we're back to like plot. This is great. This yeah. is good shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I missed it. I it was missed, very fun. I missed the first second being part of the plot. And I love that, you know, Matt's like, yeah, you don't fight this many people and, like, walk away unscathed, right? He takes injuries. Like, yeah. it's, this is not, this is not like a oh, Tavir and easy fight. Because he doesn't have his quarter staff, so he he He's has to close knife. distance with swords. Yeah. And when he runs at them and they're like, ah! Oh. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that would be terrifying. Um... Yeah, but he also, my favorite thing about this is dagger, dagger, right? Mm. And then he starts to run, and mid-run, he bends over, pulls knives out of his boots while running. That's a skill. That that's a skill. skill. I need. That's like an athletics check and an acrobatics check at yeah, the same time. Yeah, I want to learn how to do that. Um, um, why? Reasons. Well, now I'm scared. So I can make No knives videos. in the bedroom. <laughs> Hi. No, ni- no, ha- hashtag there's, no knives in the bedroom. There's this company called Blades for Babes. This is so random. And they make like really like femme knives. Like it'll be like a lipstick. Nope, it's a knife. Or they do like knife, like thigh, like the thigh knives and shit. And, and they're really fucking cool and I want one. <laughs> Anthony, anyway. thank you for that super chat. Thank you, Anthony. Just tuned into the most important person in BDSM is the sub. True. Uh, is it weird? I didn't know for a second that I clicked into the right podcast. Yes, I agree, nerdy. Uh, I'm glad that you agree. Thank Everyone you, yeah. should agree. That it should not be a controversial point at all. But Matthew, uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Would, you. you would hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We almost got that dagger, dagger, dagger. Well, he can't. He his daggers don't magically return to him like Vaxes do. So I got one of those in my campaign. Oh, you did? I got a returning dagger. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Cost me a lot of money, but it's going to be worth it. Uh, Vaxes is his belt. Oh. Things he pulls out of his belt return to the belt. That's really cool. No, yeah. mine is just this specific dagger. The thing is, my character is a sorcerer, so you're not sure how you're going to use it. Oh, I'll use it. I'll use it. It's you have like fun. a negative five to aim though. Here's the thing. I didn't build my character to be like OP. Like, you know, I, it's it's fun. Okay. It, it, the, my character has some strong flaws and weaknesses. Um, and, you know, cool shiny dagger spending all my money on it might have been one of those weaknesses. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, Matt kills all of the men uh, and he leaves one woman alive uh, and he just can't do it. He, he can't finish. Well, he doesn't leave her. Tuan comes over and fucking breaks her throat. Well, no, but he he hesitates, which l- yes. l- leaves him open to die. He's like, I'm going to die. And, and the moment he's going to die, because he doesn't want to kill a woman, uh, which is fucking ridiculous. She's trying to murder you. Gender goes out the window if you pull a knife on me. I will I will beat the shit out of yes. you if you are a woman who pulls a knife on me. We are very different from I will that. never hit a woman in any other scenario, but if you are trying to kill me... Your gender, like, I do not care how many breasts you have. At the point where you are trying to kill me, it doesn't matter anymore. Your life is forfeit. A it, lot of our characters have that, yeah. Ha, yeah, it's it's not something that you and I can relate to, but no. our characters feel very strongly about I am a feminist, which yeah. means that if you try and kill me and you're a woman, I will beat the shit out of you. Yes. I'm not dying for nobody. <laughs> I'm not dying for honor. I'm not dying for chivalry. Fair. Other than that, no, I'm not going to hit a woman, obviously. Like, I'm yeah. not fucking... A sadist, but I'm not a bad person. Uh, but if you're trying to kill me, I could be. And James Smith, thank you for that super chat. Hello from work. Just saying hi. Well, I can. Hi. I have a good rest of book club and have a great weekend. You too. Uh, we'll and Bryce you later. says, would you not be distracted if they had five breasts? Maybe. <laughs> you know what? Maybe distracted, but it wouldn't stop Where's me, the like... fifth one? <laughs> uh, on the belly button. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Narendra says, nerdy five minutes ago, I couldn't kill a woman. I couldn't kill a woman just for, like, being a bad person, right? No, like, no, no. It, like, I would, like, in that, in that, in that, in that situation with Tuan, I would tell her to leave, but I wouldn't kill her. But, like, if she yeah, had yeah. pulled a knife on me. If someone is Or if she was trying, trying to, kill to kill someone you. else, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm one of those people where, like, if you try and hurt my wife, I will kill you. There's yeah. no, like, there's no, like, well, I was only trying to hurt your wife, not kill your wife. No, no, you tried to hurt my wife. You're dead. <laughs> like, literally. Your body yeah. will never be found, and your loved ones will never have closure. Wow. I'm, I, that's not a joke. You're the most important person on the planet to me. If anyone tried to hurt you, they're dead. I, there's no there's no court of law that I will care about in that moment. I won't get caught. I will get away with it. I'm, I'm, I'm 
Very sneaky. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very sneaky, this one. But you will die. <laughs> I I, I, know. I don't care. Like that's know. not one of those. There, there's, there's. This is why I feel safe going to cons. You know. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have a six foot four husband. There's no limit to the ends of the earth I would go to protect you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a I'm a softy. I'm a gentle man. I I am a I will take care of everybody I can take care of mm -hmm. until you're in danger, and then that goes out the window. You know what I mean? Like that's it's not complicated. Yes, I want to like you know if my life is in danger if you're. If you're being mean to me, it doesn't, I don't get it. It's why I relate to parents so much. Parent is like, I, yeah, there are problems in the world. I'll get to it. My wife is I'll in get danger. get to it after Fahil. I'm going to go kill, like, it, as much as I feel like the, the, the Shido plotline has dragged, I totally relate to Perrin. If you were in danger, I don't care about anything else. My bills will get paid when they get paid. My wife is currently in danger. The world, it might yeah. end soon. I will deal with that. But first, my wife is in danger. I have a thousand people to go kill. And I would do it because I love you. Well, thank you. I would uh, I would do my best, you know. I I can't wield that hammer. That that's too heavy for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's controversial. I don't fucking care. I'm a husband who is married to a lady, and I will do my husbandly duty. <laughs> Your husbandly duty. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I don't expect you to do the same. You're very small. If I'm in a fight, don't try and help. I'm good. I'm wild. Go get your go get your bow and arrow and like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep distance. Keep distance. Uh, so they um, they get back to Luca's circus mm -hmm. and Matt is like, guys, we're leaving. Uh, th there are people behind the. There was a murder. The the go the golem. We didn't bring it up, but the golem is still chasing them. There was a murder back in Jurador that the circus was being blamed for. And there's a Sanchez army on the border of Murundi. And also Matt got into a big fight with a big merchant in this town. He's like, we have to flee into the woods. Otherwise, uh, and I, I like Matt here. He is thinking, and he's thinking well, and he's like, no, tonight, we're, we're just leaving. There's no world in which we can stick around for this mm -hmm. because there's too many people in too many directions who are mad at us. Let's fucking go. And we find out that he does, in fact, do that because Perrin thinks about him, and he's like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Matt's in the woods. That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. Uh... Chapter 12. A Manufactory. What? Just a weird name. Manufactory? Yeah. Why? Like, it makes total sense, but I legitimately had never seen this word before. Is it? Wasn't it always a manufactory before we, like, shortened it to factory? Isn't that, like, a re that I think that's a real thing. Look, quite possibly. Or I possibly, made that up in my head. No, I, I don't know. It might quite possibly be a real word. I had never seen it before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, this chapter could also be, uh, Perrin's a fucking badass. And yes. I, 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 despite the, the lethargicness of his storyline, fuck, I love him so much. Uh, um, thank you, monkey. You should always put your money on me. Perrin takes zero shits. Uh, in a way that is Why? really Why? He doesn't poop at all? That sucks. I can relate to that. <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh, please. You called me out in uh, the beating them off because I said it by accident. That was so So funny. I have to call out your shit. I know, and I ha you had the same reaction as I just had. <laughs> well, yes, I was very confused because <laughs> I didn't hear what I had said. He beats off four guys. Um. <laughs> it's my bad. My bad. Um, Mal Indio says Nerdy likes to look a man in the eyes as he dies. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's dark. I feel like... I wouldn't. I feel like I look like a Lannister, but I am a Stark. Do you know what I mean? I live in the cold tundra of the North. Sure. I, I'm a firm believer of the man who... Um, well, yeah, I'm sitting... <laughs> I'm literally sitting in a Stark chair. Uh, I'm a firm believer in the man who... Um, I can't remember what the quote is exactly, but the man who gives the sentence should um, drop swing the, the sword. Should swing the sword. Yeah, who men who I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, swing, yeah. I think that I think the debate around the death sentence uh, in the United States would be a lot less complicated if the, the judge the person who judged had to do the killing. had to be the one to press the button. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it would be. Or you would get some really fucked up people becoming judges. That's also true. Because you get some really fucked up people becoming doctors. So. You know, that's also true. It, 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 yeah. Mm, that's a dark thought. Anyways, Do you know what kinks your gyno has? Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. I don't <laughs> like that. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Uh, Perrin has got a, he's got a multi pass. Um, <laughs> he does Perrin, have a multi pass. Perrin is like, uh, multi pass.
pass. Multi pass. Perrin, Perrin paid for the premium edition of the video game, and yes. so he has the piece of paper that allows him to skip the annoying side quests. Exactly. Yes. Um. So Perrin goes to Almazar with Kurgan and Tyree. Um. And they they see some rockin. There's not as many rockin as they expect. Mm-hmm. Um. But they go into the rockin place. Um. To where the rockin riders are. And um, this dude just starts straight up bel- belching uh, beetles. And I was like, oh, no, he broke his wand. <laughs> no, no. Oh, um, God. Yeah, so uh, he's just belching beetles everywhere. And then he dies from belching beetles. It also reminded me of um, The Mummy. Yes. This happens, in, that, this happens in The Mummy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, this guy deflates. <laughs> And beetles pour out of him, and yeah. everyone loses their fucking shit. And like Perrin's, like it's just beetles. Yeah, but like if I was Perrin, I would leave. <laughs> so would I. Because like, what if one of those be? What if those beetles? What if you can catch whatever he had? That's the thing. It's like, what if those beetles gr- crawl into your body? Like they all make the assumption that it's not contagious very quickly, and I'm like, all right, I would. We have to get that meeting. But I was like, that I would go outside and do this. Maybe I, I don't know. Yeah. Personally, but I didn't, I, yeah. Again, with the horror stuff, very cool, very well written. Incredibly well written. I yeah. love when Robert Jordan does this kind of thing. This um, scene was rad. Yeah, rad, 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 yeah. rad. <laughs> but the Banner General is like, anyways, back to business. Give me your rockin'. And the guy's like, you can have four. And she's like, all right. Honestly, this whole chapter rocks. Yes. Yeah, right? Great. Like, this chapter is fucking sick. Mm-hmm. The, the the negotiation, the way, like, Perrin is, like, throwing out the thing, learning that, like, the Banner General talks to different clerks in different ways because the, the Sanchin must have the most complicated uniform system. Oh, my God. I know. It's like the uh, how the Empire has the, like, red and blue squares, but yeah. no one really knows what those red and blue squares mean because it's way too complicated. Exactly. The, and, like, Canon has tried to, like, demystify it a little bit, but Does every time they Alex add something... Know? Well, no. So the the problem with it is that the movies are inconsistent with it. Yeah. And so the some people have different. So no matter how modern Star Wars tries to explain it, it there's always something in the original films that doesn't line up doesn't with work. whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Um, because it was rule of cool back then, and now people want it to be like a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, but yeah, so they we we actually learn about the Sanchin in a way that gets into, like, the aspects of their society that I don't immediately, like, want to vomit at. Yeah. So it's actually kind of interesting. I, I like this scene a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, so uh, there's not many rockin' because Saroth is sending them to find Tuan. Yes. To murder Tuan. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Oh. Saroth's trying to murder Tuan, and Tuan's like, oh, yeah, it's probably my, it's probably not my youngest sister because she's eight, but actually 14. 14's too young to try and commit but murder. But maybe the one who's older than me. Yeah, 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 The one who's younger than me, like, she's, like, kind of super quiet, so it might not be her, but, like, yeah. Tuan immediately is, like, all right. None of that matters because those people are all dead. Uh, we think. Nah, they're, they're, they're dead. I have a feeling they're dead yeah. as well. It'd be a weird thing. I don't think that's a lie. I think they're dead. But so Perrin shows his piece of paper, and the person's, like, you can have two rockin'. And they're, like, four rockin'. He's, like, fine, I'll take, leave me half my rockin'. Uh, and, um, I, do you know what the groundlings are? Is that the soldiers, or is that the people who ride the rockin'? No, the something rockin' are the people who ride it. Okay. The groundlings are just, like... Because the groundlings is an improv troupe in L.A. It's, like, where, like, Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler got their start. And oh. so it's very... Every time I read groundlings, I laugh, because I'm like, oh, the, are they going to do improv? Are we, are we, are we doing long or short-form improv today? Right. No, that's fair. And then um, they ride over to the manufactory to talk to um, no. to talk to the fork root lady, who's very proud of the four thousand six hundred pounds of fork root she has somehow accomplished. Yeah, it is literally a factory, <laughs> guys. I know we talked about it last week, and I know like it does not matter. Morat Rockin, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It does not matter. No, isn't Morat Rockin the the people who ride them? Then what are the big Rockin called? Rockin. No, no, the big rockin'. What do you mean? There is the, like, rockin', which are, like, the, like, X-Wings, and then there's the Millennium Falcon rockin' that are, like, the troop carriers. What are the big rockin' called? Toe rockin'? There's big rockin'? Yeah. I thought each rockin' had, like... Toe rockin'. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, there's the, the... Remember, there's the ones that, like, landed and deposited the troops in Amadisia when they fought the White Cloaks. I thought there was, like, two people. No, 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 there's, they carry, like, 12. Nicholas Cardillo, thank you for that super chat. What? <laughs> I'll let you read it. It's your... In this economy? Thank you, Nicholas, for that super chat. Toro, I, I didn't realize yeah. they were that much different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that makes sense. Do you it's remember Um, Do you remember in James Cameron's Avatar when the bigger thing was 
Torak Makdo? Yes. Do you think that he stole that from this? Because, <laughs> like, the fact that, like... Do you mm-hmm. think the do you think James Cameron read the Wheel of Time? Because the Torak Makto thing is very the Turok is the thing from um is the bigger wyvern. I wonder from if Rockin actually Avatar. comes from a different language and both of them just like inherently pulled from it in some way. Oh maybe. Yeah. Like Rockin might be like a word in a different language. Yeah. Um Rockin is a cab, Torakin is a bus. <laughs> Got it, gotcha. Okay. So yeah, they go talk to Forkroot Lady, and she has four. Th- she has so like so much. Uh, guys, I don't know how to explain this, but this is hilarious. Do you know how many pounds of herbs? Four thousand pounds. I mean, obviously, you know it's four thousand pounds, but like, do you know that the 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 the, the size of the it. fields? No wagons. Have... No wagons, though. Only carts. Well, yeah, because Neil's fucking gateways aren't big enough. That was very funny. <laughs> So many carts, guys. And so, um, Perrin threatens death, um, and uh, she she decides that he's an intimate of Suroth and lets him have it. Mm-hmm. It's cute. It's a really good scene. I recommend you read it because I'm not going to go through it beat by beat because I don't remember it beat by beat. But it was really <laughs> good. Perrin uh, Perrin steps in and he's that. when he's told not to, uh, and he takes a risk and it pays off. Yeah, because he doesn't know how to address Suroth. But also because he's sick of it and he's like, yeah. nah, like we're fucking doing this. Let's do it. And Perrin, I fucking like this was great. This chapter, like after the, ch- I didn't love the Matt chapters. Obviously, we've talked about it today. They, they weren't great. Not my favorite. There was good stuff in them, but not my favorite. Then to end on this chapter this week was rad because it was everything I love about Perrin, right? He is a simple man with simple goals who accomplishes them by confidently just being who he is and, and, and like stepping in and like, like, it's just awesome. Uh, Daniel Short says, "Why not just 4,000 pounds. 4,000 pounds gathered primarily from wild-growing plants, not farm plants. Exactly. Like, I don't think you guys understand how far and wide they must be going. Shut up, Fabu. I can't believe you made that a quote. I can't believe... I Like, do you know how far and wide you would have to range to find 4,500 pounds of, uh, of an herb? That shit's crazy. That's like 25,000 plants. They're expert foragers, clearly. It's talent. It's not, but but it's not about the talent of it. Like, I get that you can be good at it, but like, the, you must, you must have traveled across like, like, like states. Funny if this makes four crude extinct. Uh, no, because now they're farming it and it's only going to grow. It's probably like, if if it's a plant that's in Sanchin and also in Randland, it's probably a plant that's very invasive. So like, it's probably everywhere. But like, it's crazy. Uh, on the other side of it, it's crazy that there's a plant that is this plentiful that causes Aes Sedai to stop channeling and nobody, and nobody knew, knew about it. That's exactly what I was going to say. I was like, if there is this much fork root around. Yeah, yeah. People just, like, drink it and get affected differently and don't know why. Like, I feel like somebody would have investigated that by now. The, the, Robert Jordan has introduced a couple of things into his books that break the world a little bit if you think about the math of it. Like, yeah. like how cold works, doesn't it doesn't really make any sense. Mm-hmm. How for, the, the, the plethora and ability to forage fork root, it doesn't... It, and the fact that Here's the ice that I have never heard of it before. That's what makes it not work for me. If the ice, if all the ice that I knew about fork root and like the Wonder Girls just didn't because they weren't taught that yet, that would make sense to me. But the yes, fork, yes, yeah, yeah. but the fork root is like new to all of our like Randland characters, uh, which it, it, well, except for the one yellow who like figured yeah, yeah. it out. Uh, Tomaine, thank you for that super chat. Ida says it makes really foul tasting tea. It doesn't. It tastes like mint. Um, uh, using the power uh, grows plants faster. Otherwise. Doesn't it taste like mint? Or at least grow some weed. I thought it was mint. Yeah, I thought it was like minty. Uh, tell uh, uh, tell Mar, thank you uh, as well for that super chat. My head cannon is that fork root is a uh, dandelion root, but that's still crazy. It, the only it's like if dandelions fix some major disease. Exactly, because yeah. I guys, I've dandelion tea. It's pretty good. Yeah, like I like dandelion tea. So like it, it's just it's um it's just one of those weird things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Baka Karn says, um, ma- many authors are bad with scale. George R. R. Martin is one of the most prolific examples of that. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. Yay. I mean, that's the problem with Game of Thrones, right? That's the mirror he's not that he got himself stuck in. Um, yeah. It's really tough when you're creating these, like, sprawling epics. 
I don't mind it. It's just funny to talk about. You know what I mean? Uh, Me Monk says, I guess the Aes Sedai could have suppressed the knowledge of Fork Root. My problem with that is that if the Aes Sedai are constantly traveling around, you would want them all to be aware of the risks. Like you yeah. would, like if, if that was, if, 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 if I said I are going to constantly be in, in countries where they're trying to like suppress rebellions and shit like that, you would want them, the, the White Tower would want them all to know about this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just very, it's like, it's like, yeah, if it was in tier or something like that, or if the Sanchin had brought it with them, it would be a very different scenario. But it's the fact that it's this plant that must be fucking everywhere. Literally everywhere. In order for them to have found 5,000 pounds of it in yeah. what, like a few months? Because winter I only so. ended, winter ended like two months ago. It might be a weed that like grows through winter. They, you know. No, 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 wait. Winter's less than two months ago. Yeah. They're, they were in full snowfall two months ago. Because, um, because. They might survive winter. Because, uh, what's her face has only been, uh, you, but you can't forage in the winter. It, no, it'll, I mean, you can but, but cover it, uncover the The shy snow. doe only captured Fayol 51 days ago. I guess because it's a root plant, it would be hard to dig into frozen ground. They were in knee deep snow 51 days ago. That's like, what I mean. It's not it's, even like. You can move the snow and maybe grab some leaves that are alive, but if you have to actually take the root and dig into frozen ground, that that's tough. That's actually difficult. There's so. there, there just there's so many weird elements of this mm -hmm. that I find it. That the, 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 the amount and the amount that they need to poison a fucking lake is just, it's like Looney Tunesy. Yeah, I was it's just fine. like, yeah, whatever. It's yeah. like, I'm not mad at it. I, I, I don't like dislike it. I just find it funny. funny. Every time it comes, every time the amounts come up, I'm like, how like, the fuck did you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I feel that. <laughs> but like, and the, the Sanjin have enough that everybody who passes into their lands now is drinking the tea, which is like, that's so much tea. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, they are finding so much for crude. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> they have it across borders. It would be like if like the Canadian government was paying for every person to cross into Canada to drink well, here's the thing. Tea. Like that is, it, it is a ridiculous amount of liquid. It, it, it is a lot. You, you kind of can't like think about it, but... I mean, I guess, like, I don't think the winter in, like, Ebudar is very, like, aggressive. So, yeah, they might have been able to, like, harvest it through the winter, no problem. Because it's not, it's not... But they've only recently started farming it. Like, the woman is literally, like, I just got, I'm just now convincing farmers to start farming this. Well, yeah, right? because the Sanchin... Let, let me find the exact thing, because I want to make sure that we're talking about the this. The Sanchin story. arrived a few months ago, yes. Uh, but she's now kind of depleted what was already naturally there. And so to keep up the numbers is going to start paying farmers to uh, not mine it. Fucking grow it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... it's um, they, They've accomplished a lot in a, in a few short months, you know? But yeah, I don't think it's... Um, I, I think that, that she's like running out of what's naturally there. But she literally says, um, I, I'm shocked at how uh, I've sh how much I've shipped off and how hard it is getting to find the plant in the wild without sending diggers unreasonable distances. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, they're, the, the, I've, I've now started uh, inducing local farmers. By this summer, I will need to build something bigger. Yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just funny. It's the just, scale it's of just it is just wild. Funny and like, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it is what it is. I'm not mad at it. It just... It's it's kind of making me chuckle because this whole plan is nuts. Yeah, and I hope it works because I want this plot to be over. Yes, <laughs> um, I desperately want it to be over. I, I said to Clarice yes. last night, I was like, if the Forsaken attacking Matt and Perrin stops the Shido plot from ending, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need we need the Shido to be done with. I hate them. Burn them to the ground. <laughs> because as they're leaving, they get the fork root. They uh, Perrin flashes this badge around. It works out. Uh, but as they're Multi -pass. leaving, yeah, uh, and he also like intimates that he's intimate with Suroth, Uh and the person, uh, or he doesn't think that that's what he's doing, but it's what he's doing. Yeah, uh, to them because their culture is what it is, and uh, they um, they leave, and then uh, once outside, Perrin turns around to say something, and as that happens, boom, arrow in the arm, shot through the heart, not no. almost, no, nope, he doesn't, <laughs> he's alive, yeah, he's fine, uh, and uh, so the Sanchin run ahead to go see what happened. Perrin's fine. He's a big boy. Uh, and uh, turns out that the two assassins, would-be assassins, uh, took poison. 
and they also killed must, themselves. They also were using two rivers bows, right? No. Wait, aren't they? No, he was saying that... Uh, I two, thought it was implied they were two rivers. No, he said that a two river shaft would not have been so easily deflected. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, he's like, oh, like... If, if those had been two rivers bows, this would have done more damage. But he's saying that the, the arrow didn't get that far in his arm because um, this, it, like... The, the he's like, ah, I'm fine. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Ashandra, Ashandra A. Uh, Nynaeve mentioned Forkroot was some of sort of folk remedy before she found out the hard way about its effects on channelers. But so she, like, never took it herself? Like, I just have so many weird questions about Forkroot. Yeah, uh, yeah, we just have questions. It's it's, it's a medicine Nynaeve gives to other people but never drinks is like a weird, that's weird. Or she drinks it and gets dizzy every time and is like, oh, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Oh, maybe it was because she wasn't channeling yet. And so she would like lose the ability to channel, doesn't matter. but she didn't know. No, it doesn't matter. That's why the that's why the Sanchin are giving it to people because even if you can learn to channel, it still affects you because women just randomly get dizzy and then they no no no. I'm off. saying that she got dizzy from it, but she didn't know back then that it was taking away her ability to channel because she wasn't channeling actively. Oh, she just got dizzy. So she would just like drink this tea. She would make it be like, oh my god, I'm I gotta go to bed. I got the vapors. Yeah, I gotta go to bed. And he's just getting high. <laughs> Oh my uh, god, that's funny. Welcome back to the nerd table, Ashandarai. Um, and then um, he's like, Neil, don't heal me out here. Wait till we're in private. And Kurgan's like, you let that man use the power on you? And he's like, I have a hole in my body. Yeah. Would you not want a hole in your body closed? And Kurgan's like... <laughs> Nah. Which is weird, because I feel like the domain, wouldn't they have the domain heal people? Wouldn't people be comfortable with the one power being used on them as long as there's a soul bomb? No, they think that they're, they're, they are absolutely not okay with anything to do with the one power. It's like evil, incarnate, don't touch me, don't look at me, don't perceive me. Don't perceive me. Like, that. yeah. Which I think, yeah, definitely is like a flaw. If you have uh, soldiers that can be healed. Chad is saying that Nynaeve had never heard of it before the dress shop. So that's not what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I was like, that seems silly. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's uh, that's the reading for this week. We're headed towards something. We're actually headed towards things, y'all. Things are happening. It's um, nice. The next chapter is about Elaine. Question for you. Mm-hmm. We are now 328 pages into this 862-page book. Mm -hmm. Do you think Rand ever shows up? Well, we can find out pretty easily. No, 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 no. Because here's 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 a thing I have. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what 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 is the central plot of the Wheel of Time? Uh, Time and Gaiden. Is it? Because it doesn't seem like many of the books are about that. It's what happens to lead up to that. It's every single event that happens anywhere. I I don't know. I just uh, there there is an element of it that I'm like, hey, like I would love to like. I would love to know what like the main character is doing for the actual plot. Because the, the side quests are fun, but I would really I would really love to like see the main character again. He hasn't been in um, he, like the last book, yeah, and a bit and a half. Mm -hmm. When was the last Rand POV? Did we have any Rand POV in Crossroads of Twilight? Maybe, but nothing like super yes, consequential. Not, yeah, yeah, we haven't. Um, yeah, remember when yeah, Rand, Rand cleansed the taint and then it never came up again. Like, literally, like, just, we even had the Forsaken chapter didn't come up there. Like, we literally had the cool thing happen in Winter's Heart, and it just has not affected anything for over a thousand pages of novel. I know. And, like, it's, I, I'm really, it's it's very disappointing to me that the, the books play out the way that they do, because the, the, the pacing is so bad that it really, like, it kills plot lines. Because I don't know what's going on with Rand. It has been so long since we've been with him. And we do nothing but read these books. We read them every single week. I know. It has been so long since Rand has done something that, like, I'm genuinely, like... I want to know what's happening with the with the taint not, like, not being cleansed for him. Like, he's he's still not well. Yeah. And, 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 and we haven't gotten to see him in so long. It's just that, like, it's the fact that it's, like, three... We're 380 pages into this book. And the most we've seen of Rand is that him and that men are fucking. Yes. They're still boning down, which is nice. <laughs> and so, I don't Happy know. It's, it's It's so strange. It, it, it's very strange how lethargic this series is. And I, I really do think that, like, they could hire an editor, like a really talented editor, to create a version of The Wheel of Time that is excellent. Mm -hmm. And as is, 
it is momentarily excellent surrounded by just fat. It it, it is a very like it is an overweighed series mm-hmm. and the the fat really like Robert Jordan needed an editor so bad. He just needed an editor so bad. Yeah. And the fact that he didn't have one is so like glaring. I mean, he had an editor but I don't I I yeah. I don't think that it was edited particularly well, personally. Uh, sorry, Harriet. Uh, Sam, thank you for that super chat. Uh, average yield of 15 to 20 pounds per acre for alfalfa. So another line to say they could finish that much. Sand. But that's for... Sand. Sand. What the fuck? But they're not farming it yet. It's a random weed that they find places. Like, look, here's the thing. If the Sanchin got there and, like, there were already fork root farms... It makes sense. It makes sense, right? Like, but the fact is, like, they have to go, like, looking for this thing. There's not endless rows and rows and rows and rows of just four. All right. So we're going to we're going to be conservative here. We're going to go four thousand five hundred pounds divided by 20. So that means they need to have farmed two hundred and twenty five acres. That's two hundred. If they get 20 pounds per acre, they need to farm two hundred and twenty five acres of land. (laughs) <laughs> of farmed alfalfa. <laughs> that is farming the entire, like, that's like farming all of Manhattan. <laughs> wow, when you put it like that. They have a Manhattan's worth <laughs> of fork root. And that's just the stuff they have in the storeroom. They've been giving it out to cut the borders everywhere. They have it a, a Manhattan's worth. That's fucking nuts. That, that's 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 pretty wild. Uh, yeah. We also don't know how big fork root is. Like, how much of the plant is actually usable? I have no idea. I'm assuming all of it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna say all of it is usable, but it sounds like it's only the roots. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> James, I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about the logistics. Guys, the logistics are all I care about. It is my favorite thing to talk about in any series. It's 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 fun. Especially you know? because there's so little, like, actually happening in the series right now. And I know a lot happens in the rest of this book. And, like, the beginning of this book rocks. Like, the glad stuff, still the best shit ever. But mm-hmm. the logistics are fun to talk about. The Tuan stuff isn't, like... Yeah. I, I feel like I, there's a responsibility to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But it's not fun to talk about. The logistics so, of this ridiculous plan are fun. I, the same way that right. I love talking about the r- ridiculousness of like how There's, how did all the Avengers come through the portals? I don't care, but it is funny to think like how did how did Doctor Strange get his sorcerers everywhere to open portals at the exact same instant? Like yeah. the reality of that, it's silly. I still love Avengers Endgame, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are saying that like the Sanchin control a lot of territory in Ranland, which is fine. But we're talking about one single person has the forty five hundred pounds. It's not like all of the Sanchin across all of the farms across everywhere has this much money. We also get money, 20 but... pounds of alfalfa out of an acre now with modern farming techniques. Like, it's not like... Yeah. We weren't... Like, they, they don't have modern plows and they don't have fertilizer. <laughs> They're doing their best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's one of those things where, like, one person is farming this much in... I don't know, she has to meet, like, what did she say, like, a monthly quota? So that's not even over the several months she's been there. That's, she's already, she's shipping it out. She she has farmed much more and, than that. And here's the thing, I wouldn't find it as problematic mm-hmm. if, like, earlier on it had been more plentiful. If I, Like, like, like the, it's, it's that, it's not that, like, this one detail doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. It's that all of these weird details together make fork root this convenient thing. Yeah, kind of. You know what I mean? Where you're just kind of like, oh, okay, sure. And you move on. Like, it's the, oh, they do have O'Gears. That is true. They do have O'Gears. That does change things. Um, it, But it is the, it is the like, our- the plentifulness of the plant, plus the Aes Sedai not knowing about it. Yes. Plus the fact that the plan is to poison a lake with it. it it's those three things together that are funny. Yeah. Individually, none of them do I actually have a problem with. Yeah. But it is the, like, confluence of those three things that I'm like... Fork root has to like thread this weird needle between plot points. Yeah. Whereas like when fork root, when we first were introduced to it as this thing the yellow have, 
this one yellow has that is this danger to Aes Sedai. Yeah. It was a really interesting, like, um, way to balance the scales with the Aes Sedai yeah. a little bit. because it wasn't everywhere. If the Sanchen And now it's had... like, <laughs> we're going to flood lakes with it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. If the Sanchen had, like, brought it over and the first thing they did was started, like, planting fork root, like, you know, like, they brought yeah, yeah. tons and tons and tons of it over. It is just, the, yeah, the fact that there's so much of it around coupled with the fact that the Aes Sedai just don't know about how it many is kind diggers of do they have? You know what I mean? Like, how many diggers did they bring from Sanchen? Gotta be a lot. It's just funny. Yeah. It just, it, it goes, it, it's one of those things that go, it's it's a plot point that has gone through so many different books. And honestly, like, I think that that's part of it, is that, like, by by book 11, do you really remember what you wrote in book four about the four crew? You know what I mean? So, like, it doesn't matter as much. But when you when you really think about it, it's like, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm in. Like, I, I'm excited for this plan. I'm excited for the battle. I'm excited for the way Robert Jordan will write it. It's probably going to be great. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm going to giggle at it a little bit when they're like, we poisoned the lake. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you did. The cold lake. Yeah. That, that'll that help you steep the tea. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's just funny. funny. It's just funny. That's all it is. It's just like a little bit of a Looney Tunes moment in a big fantasy series that has some crazy shit going on. It's fine. Yeah, it's fantasy. You just kind of are like, all right, cool, if you say yeah. so. Um... <laughs> Stephanie mm. says, I don't think we will have the Shido storyline in the TV show. That will close the debate. If we do have the Shido, <laughs> it will be very different. I, Guys, you honestly, sure it will be? I don't, I, I think the TV show, I, I don't think this TV show is going to get that far. Um, mm. I don't think it'll get all eight seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly because they can't get it out fast enough. I think that they're going to lose audience interest. And I've said this before. I think that they're waiting too long between seasons and it's going to harm the seasons. Um, I'm glad they're already filming season three. Maybe season three will be come out a little bit closer to season two. Um, but I do wonder how much interest there will be for season two, um, given the response to season one and also j- just the amount of time in between. Um, well, and the kind of like flippy floppy wishy washiness on it, like the, well, yeah, here it is. We're working on it. We're not going to tell you when. Oh, here's the origins. Just kidding. We're not going to do that. Oh, we're yeah. not going to. There's not a lot of like promotion out about it. Like it just kind of seems a little uh like not well like planned out and the way that amazon just dropped carnival row yeah season two was so disappointing yeah um and people didn't even know about it. i well, i liked carnival row season one a lot and i didn't even know it was coming out someone was there like carnival row came out yesterday and i was like wait what You're the like, fuck it's been me? four years yeah and they didn't market it at all and so i just i thought that should have been canceled and so to, to go into the discussion of season two, like I'm like legitimately concerned that the amount of time between seasons and the fact that Game of uh, House of the Dragon and Rings of Power both came out and looked so much better just visually. And that, that's not a knock at Wheel of Time. They did not have as much money. But but I think that from an audience's perspective, the people who got excited about Game of Thrones and got excited about Rings of Power and are looking for a fantasy show that might tune into this might look at it and be like, oh, it doesn't quite have the budget of those and not be as interested because... The, the expectations are higher now. Yeah. So I'm hopeful the season two, um, I'm, I'm hopeful they've stepped up the visuals on season two so that it ha- can like compete a little bit better with those other shows. Especially like the scale of these books is absurd. Yeah. They're going to need some money, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. yeah, it is. I, I don't know. I don't really know what their plan is. It feels like they genuinely like don't really have much of a plan and that sucks. You know? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I like this point. Um, uh, marketing has been really bad for season one. No merch either. I agree with you, Nerdy. I, I feel like we've put up more Wheel of Time merch than the Wheel of Time has. Like, I'm not joking, right? Yeah. Like, I haven't seen Wheel of Time shirts or hoodies or really anything. Yeah. Now, granted, there's not... They, because of the way that they designed the world for the show, and, and this is going to sound like another dig at the show, and I, I hate that, but it's just the truth. I feel like they kind of... Um, I don't think they did a good job designing the fantasy elements into things that can be merchandised. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, Game of Thrones has such elaborate... I mean, like, look at my fucking chair, right? Look at this. This is fucking rad. Everything has strong branding. Yeah. And so I think that, um, especially because we didn't meet Andor in the first book, the Red Lion of Andor could have been great merch. Yeah. Um, I I think that there are... um, I think that there are... There's room for merch in this world that they've kind of missed out on, particularly by not having the uh, the Trollocs be very um, recognizable. They, they were the 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 because of the way they did well, make and whatnot. That all of the Trollocs scenes, and because of COVID, they didn't really get to like show the Trollocs very well. 
And so, and and like the merch draw is a little too freaky for merch. They, they needed to like have some iconography in season one. The Waygate would have been a good one, but what they did with the Waygate was very bland. Yeah. Um, In a way that's kind of interesting when it's open, but it like, it's not like the door to Moria. If they'd made the Waygate into something really like elaborate and fant- fantastical, they could have made shirts and things like that. Yeah. And I think that some shows like Stranger Things does such a good job of making sure that the world is merchandisable so that the show has this like second life of like, oh, what's that shirt from? Oh, it's from that thing. I'll go check that out. And it, it like it perpetuates. Uh, Rick and Morty does the same thing. Like how you merchandise your show is free word of mouth from the people who love it. Yeah. And the people who are most likely to wear it out in the world are also the people who are most likely to speak highest of it. Yeah. Even the rings are kind of blah. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. I, like, the rings did not, like, strike me in a way that I was like, oh, that's rad. I would have, I would have, I would have designed the shawls to be very gorgeous, mm-hmm. and then I would have sold the shit out of them as scarves. Yeah. Look at all the Gryffindor, Slytherin, like, look, the scarves from Harry Potter and the way that those have become iconic to selling that franchise. Yeah, yeah, they should have had a uniform look. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, um, the hair and mark on the blades... Should be, like, distinctive and cool. Like, you know, someone's like, oh, fuck, I want that. Yeah. You know, that's, like, my nerd stamp. But and so, and there's so, like, not a lot there, yeah. Season one didn't do a good job of that. I'm hopeful season two will do more, but the characters that season two is going to introduce are tough for that. You don't really want to make Sanchen merch. It's uh, complicated. No, no. Uh, I And the Aiel don't really have physical symbols like their clans yeah. don't have like sigils you know what i mean um like cold rocks or whatever it is you know like they they, they yeah they don't have strong like branding in like our sense of branding right and so the um, way the way that the way that I'm, I'm i'm i think that we're gonna get season three they're filming it now right i think we'll get season three we might get season four but i think that honestly the show isn't going to have to worry too much about all of this because I, I don't know that the show's going to get that far. Like, I don't think the show's going to really have to deal with the slavery element all that much. Because I don't really think that they're going to get there. And and I hate to say that. I want to be wrong. I want season two to come out. I want it to be banger. I want it to get banger numbers. I, I desperately want to be wrong. Because I do love this world. Even if I maybe don't love the books. All the time. Um, and I'm very honest about my opinions. I'm honest about the stuff I love. I'm honest about the stuff I don't love. I, I'm just... I, I that That's who I am. If you don't like that kind of content, if you just want people to jizz all over everything, there are plenty of people who do that. Like, go go support them. They're awesome, right? Yeah. I'm not... Their, their content is not better or worse than mine. It's just different. And, like, my, my approach to content is here is my honest take on everything that I experience and how my brain perceives it. My brain perceives things very differently from other people. I've known that since I was a child. I, I'm a weird person. I get that. I, I've known that since I was nine, and I passed that test that I wasn't supposed to pass, and I was supposed to be in a program for kids that are weird. That didn't Fine, have enough I was funding. Also in a program for kids that were weird. Right. What? That's why we work together. I know. I, I, I know that like my way of viewing the world is very peculiar and it's it's me, but that's all I can give you. That, that this is what I got. Yeah. But saying that, I honestly do not think the show will get to season eight, and I desperately want it to. Those two things can be true, right? And I think that unless they come up with a good way of marketing the show with merchandise and 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 visually iconography in the show, they will never have to worry about Tuan, because I don't think they'll get to her. And I Maybe. don't think they should, but uh, I, I, they w- I think they should change a lot about that character, make it work. But for yeah. my taste, based on how I'm seeing even the even the hardest, corest Twitter of time people respond to what's going on with the show right now, I don't have a lot of faith that the show is retaining even its core audience with the way they've handled marketing the show. The biggest misstep, obviously, being the origins thing, which I think is unforgivable. Um, to kind of make a joke that the intern fucked up. Like, I think that all the way all of that was handled was very disrespectful from the company to the fandom. Um, yeah. Don't announce a show's coming out and then just not have it come out and then m- make a joke about it a week later. Like, fuck that shit. Um, yeah. I'm just worried. I'm worried about the show, but also this shit seems unadaptable, so maybe it's for the best if it gets canceled. Rafe can go do God of War, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Is he doing God of War? Yeah. Huh. I know. He's not who I would choose because um, God of War is an action series and the weakest part of the Wheel of Time show is generally the action. The action. So that's fair. I'm a little worried about the God of War show. Um, I'm hopeful season two shows us some action. that Maybe he teams up with someone who's like action is their thing, you know? And I hope so. Because other than that Maiden of the Spear fight, that, uh, there's not a lot in well, season which one that I Well, I don't even know if it was conceptualized by him. It seemed like the woman who was in it was also the fight choreographer for it and like made it fucking work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Um... 
Sh- John Batista for uh, Kratos. John Batista? Sorry. Uh, fucking. John Batista? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, fucking, what's his? That, I know. Dave Batista? Dave Batista, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. It's, it's, sorry. Single, single uh, syllable names are confusing for you me. You confused my first name with my middle name? Yeah, that, that was it. That, that was it. Fucking. I don't know why I said John. Um, Brian Cranston for Kratos. Who's Brian? Um, I'm not going to ask. You don't know who Brian Cranston is? Maybe. Breaking Bad? Never watched it. Malcolm in the Middle, he's the dad? Never watched it. Jesus Christ. Godzilla, Never he's the dad? Never watched it. There's a lot of dads. Yeah, he's like 45. Well, he's probably older now, but... Oh, yeah, no, I don't think I've ever seen him in anything. What the fuck is... What? Like, I've, I've oh seen his God. face before, but I actually don't think I've seen anything that he's in. Uh, Your Honor, Better Call Saul, no... Nerdy for Kratos? No, I, I I don't think I could get that big. That Kratos is jacked. Sonic Sean, I, I would be interested in um Christopher Judge doing it. I, I'm I'm like worried they wouldn't give him the shot, but like I, I feel like I don't know. I, I I'm into the idea of it, Sonic Sean. If he's good live action, I've never I've only ever heard his voice. He's the voice in the game that you played, Christopher Judge. Gotcha. I, so like I, I I don't know. Like if he if he auditions really well and he crushes it live action, like I don't see why not. Right. Not all voice actors can be actors, but, he's, but that's just that. I want to show you, you know, what it looks like because uh, he he might be fantastic. Yeah. Not all, no, no, no. All voice actors can be actors, but not all voice actors can play every part they voice. Well, okay. All yeah. voice actors are actors. I don't want to. I don't want to make that like. It, but it's a different medium. <clears throat> it, 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 like, like, um, a physical, like, f- physicalization of a character is That's different than. Judge. What the fuck? Yeah, he's huge. Looks like. Why does he look like plastic in that photo? I think it's just a bad photo. So it's like oiled up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. That was a that was a weird photo that you showed me. Um But ugh. yeah, that's he's massive. Like he yeah, could yeah, do yeah. it. Um he's just older. So like I, I if he could pull off the performance, like I think it, he could do it, but Yeah. Yeah, the physicality of Kratos is going to be one of the biggest things. I think if they don't give him an audition, I think that's disrespectful. If they don't give him a shot, yeah. I would be disappointed. Yeah. No, I, I that's fair. He deserves it. He's so good in those games. Like yeah. he, he really is. He's he's a fucking he's so good in those games and he at least deserves a chance. I'm not saying that he should get it automatically. I definitely think they should make the best choice for the TV show. Mm-hmm. Um but um uh like if they don't give him a shot, I think that's disrespectful. Yeah. No, that's valid. Um yeah, but yeah, no, I I I I love the Wheel of Time. I'm 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 struggling with the two on stuff, and it could make me not love the Wheel of Time, unfortunately. And I hope that it doesn't go that way. I, I want I want to keep going. The way that I felt last week, where I felt like we were back, and like at the Galad stuff, like the Galad stuff was so fucking good. Yeah. And I just, I hope that Tuan doesn't ruin this for me because she could. I'm not gonna lie, she could. I am, I am not above hating a whole thing because of one small detail. Uh, she's not a small detail though. But she should be. She's, she's yeah. like not. She's like the fourth lead's wife. Yeah, I just mean like she's, like, not, she's a prevalent character in the series. It's not like fucking. You know, like a random I said I that's named and then never got back to again, right? Like it's it's a it's a lot. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Thank God the Perrin chapter at the end was so fucking good. Yeah. Because it was like Perrin, man, he he's he's fine in this like new level of himself that like the, his plot kind of sucks, but like God, he is just he's, he's my boy. Up. You know yeah. what I mean? He's just he's my boy, and I love him. And him and Lan, they're just these two men that I just. They they never let me down, <laughs> and I'm so grateful for the both of them. Yeah, yeah, Lan is perfect. <sighs> yeah, yeah, they are. Parent, parent, and Lan really are the like heart of this series for me. They're they're they are the things that I love the most. There's mm-hmm. other characters I love, but they're the things I love the most. And um, I just I'm like no matter what I feel about the series, I'll always be grateful for those two characters and yeah. meeting them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh... Yeah. Christian Rapper says this is the longest book club to date. That is not true. No, we've definitely gone to this like one, 220 before. We're only at two hours and 57 minutes. The longest book club to date, I believe, is three hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> Oopsie. So <laughs> we might get there. We might talk for another half hour. Who knows? Probably well, we not, though, because it's time for high low. We also have to name the car. Oh, shit. <laughs> I let uh, you come up with four things to put in a poll while I do that. I don't that. know how to do a poll, so we're going to have to figure out how to All right, do a um, poll. Do on... any of our mods know how to do a... Uh, I don't know if the mods can do a poll. Can, yeah, the mods can do a poll. 
Guys, I don't remember where all of the name suggestions were for the car. In no, the no, the four, the four best ones were Lanfear. Yes. Um. Uh, Hyundai Shen, I think was. No, uh, actually, no. We I love like, it. Yeah, no. It's funny. Very it's funny if you're in the real time community. I feel like it feels a little bit appropriative uh, if you're if you not. You don't know what it's yeah. yeah. If you don't know what it's saying. That's um, fair. Because here's the thing. I, our car is white right now, but I don't want it to be white forever. Like, I might, like, get it wrapped. And so if we name it Lanfear and then we call it Sindane when we wrap it, yeah. I think that's very funny. I like Kara Karn. Kara Karn. This that's is my Kara Karn. Uh, um, Bella is going to be one. And what's the fourth? There was a really funny, punny one. That wasn't Wheel of Time. It was, um... It wasn't Wheel of Time? I thought it was Wheel of Time. No, there was a good... There was one that was, um, either Last of Us or Critical Role. And it was really funny. I'm trying to remember what, like, channel we had the car conversation in. I... See, I want it to be Landfear. Oh, yeah? Call it Tatooine because it has two sons. (laughs) That's funny. My God. Van Fear. It's not a van, though. Uh, look, I like Van Fear, but yeah, it's not a van. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we have a mod? Do we have a mod that can make a poll? Does anyone know? Do we know how to do this thing? Wait, it was in memes that I put that? That was dumb. Oh, Shadow Facts was also. <laughs> the Cardis. That's very funny. I like Cardis. It is bigger on the inside. <laughs> we can't do polls? Why not? I think only we can do polls. Oh, can I do a poll? I sedan. But how do I do a poll? <laughs> Alan oh. Vandragoran. That's funny. That's funny. Um. Yeah, I don't know. There was one that I thought was hilarious, but I cannot find it. Loose Tucson. <laughs> Loose Tucson. Oh my god. Sedan <laughs> Sanchez. That's really the good. The Amarillo heated seats is very funny to me, but I think it's too long for a car name. I hope Bella wins, but. Um, oh yeah, the, the nice thing about Landfear is she's a bunch of different names, so every time we wrap it, we can just call it something different. Um, And then what's. So we have Landfear, Bella, Kara Karn, and the spray, Bale Doman ship. The spray! Oh my god, that's that's kinky. Um, the Smutmobile. That's very funny, I gauge. Um, was it? Oh, yeah. you. Put- the Wagon Reborn. That was it. That's that was going it. on there. That was it. The Wagon Reborn. Okay, that's the poll. These are the options. I also think that the fifth option should be uh, this economy, but, no. um, Nerdy will not. Oh, Tucson Raider. That one was also good. All right. The poll begins while I explain, uh, Dragon Reborn. Uh, no, high-low. So high-low is a thing that we do where uh, we celebrate each other's highs, commiserate over each other's lows. Comes from my dinner table when I was a child. Uh, we would do this so that we could uh, be a little bit closer as a family. The way we do it here is that uh, we start with Clarissa's high, my low, Clarissa's low, and then my high so that we compliment sandwich this beach. Clarice, what was your high of chapter 6 through 12 of Knife of Dreams? My high... Um, my high of the section, I think, was Moraine's letter. Okay. Because it gave our characters so much motivation. There was a lot of things that were like, realize there's the reveal, obviously, that Moraine was back, which we kind of were like, okay, Moraine's not dead. You know, like, it affirmed some stuff for us. It got some, it got some new stuff going for this. And I really hope that it separates Matt from Tuan. So that yes. is my high. Here are you. And uh, make sure you smash that like button. Do we have? Do you want to just joint low this thing? Joint low, yeah. Two uh, on. on two she on. sucks. We hate her. Yeah. The sorry. worst, the, easily the worst character, and worse than any other character because of how she drags down other characters and makes them worse as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to say about the low? No. What is your high? My high is tough, um, but I think it's actually uh, watching the peddler get dragged into the street. That's your high. Yeah, it was just so well written. Like it was just sure, so sure, well written. Sure, sure, sure. It was like horrifying. It was so effective, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This, this was, um, this was." It was genuinely just so well done that I was like, "Fuck yes, mm-hmm. Robert Jordan, way to fucking go." Yeah, like that. It was just such a good section of writing, and um, 
Yeah, I just, it was horrifying. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't love it in, like, the sense that I thought it was, like, fun to read. It was horrifying to read, but it was horrifying because it was so effectively written. Yeah. And um, that is my favorite kind of writing. Like, I love when writing makes me feel something, um, but also is so gripping that I can't stop reading it. Like, I'm horrified, but I can't look away. Whereas the two-on stuff, like, I wanted to look away. I literally put the iPad down and yeah. stopped reading because I didn't want to keep reading it. Yeah. On the flip side, the horror shit, and the Beatles moment, too, right? But but yeah. especially the peddler slowly getting dragged into the ground. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, that was... Unreal. Ho- horrific, but in yeah. a well-written way. Before we get into some smut corner, um, we're going to announce the winner of the vote. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Wait, is it over? I think no. people are still voting. There's a, there's a, it looks like it's going to be a very clear winner. Guys, please vote for Landfear. <laughs> there's no way that's going to win. Vote for Landfear. I want my car to be named Landfear. I think it's so funny. You just want to ride Landfear? Well, yeah. <laughs> and then I want my car to be Sindane in a year when we wrap it. <laughs> I think that bit is so worth the time and money. It's like it's literally a $5,000 joke because it's going to be expensive to wrap the car, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also don't know if we can get Bella on the license plate. You're the one who added Bella to the poll and you didn't want Bella. We should just have our license plate be creator and people will think that we're religious. Creator! Because Bella's the creator. <laughs> oh my god. And chat's like, eh, fuck the poll. <laughs> Come on, you guys. At least at least don't let have it be Bella. At least have it be Kara Karn. Come on, we're at 148 votes. There's 340 people in this room. We can get Kara Karn above Bella. Wagon Reborn people, land fear people, change your vote. Get in there. Let's let's beat I don't Bella. Think you can change votes. Can you not change votes? Uh, you cannot change votes, I don't think. Well, uh, while the poll finishes up, uh, I, this is a good time to say that if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry. We must feed her. This episode, that algorithm goddess is mm-hmm. Aludra coming up with cannons or dragons, whatever you want to call them. I call my right bicep cannon and my left bicep dragon just so that I can be a little bit of both worlds. If you want to follow us around the internet, you can do that. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Polaris. Don't forget to rate us five stars in iTunes and make us say dumb shit. Uh, hopefully we'll have some messages from that to bring to you next week. And get a beanie. Get a cute. new Narg beanie. Very cute. Um, it's very comfortable. Very soft. It is yeah. a little bit soft. We went with a slightly softer beanie than the Wii, the Dragon Reborn beanie. Mm-hmm. So this one is a little bit, um, it's, it's a little bit, it's not as warm as the other beanie uh, because we're heading into the spring. Yeah. So I wanted a slightly different one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the, this is the new thing. It's very comfy. What else? Um, oh my God, Kara Karn is catching up, you guys. <laughs> guys, Kara Karn, Kara Karn, Kara Karn, Kara Karn. Yeah, I think you fucked up by putting Bella on there. I did. <laughs> it's a good name. It'll be fine. It's just funny. Um, what else? I'm gonna miss the Lady John Snow. Our last car name was so good. The Lady John Snow was the a Lady good John name. Snow was a good name for a car. Yeah. Um, you could say the least voted wins. It was an opposite day poll. The dark one, miasma, and Landfear won. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. Uh, well, with that, I think Bella is the clear winner. It's still 5% ahead. If that changes by the end of the podcast, we'll tweet it out. But some of you are going to leave because it's time for Smut Corner. Um, also, Expanse goes up at 6. And Expanse goes up at 6. Guys, it's episode 9. Holy shit, it's crazy. Tonight's episode of Expanse, fucking nuts. It's knocking futs. Holy yes. shit, you guys. It's so crazy. Expanse 9. Great episode. Um, <laughs> CMK Nation says Ooh. react to more anime. Dude, we are doing... Lit- we did five episodes in the last week. I don't know how much more anime we can do. <laughs> yeah, man. If you can add more hours to the day, yeah. then uh, then maybe. <laughs> but uh, don't worry. Uh, next week, we are going to have four more episodes of Attack on Titan going up. And um, we'll, we'll do more anime when some other stuff comes out as well. But for now, mm. it's going to be that. Uh, patrons, uh, go into the patron channel on the Discord and say what you want in the patron poll for March because I can't think of what the poll should be. So just go leave recommendations in the patron channel. Yes. And, uh, Clarus, what's the smut corner of the week? Where would you add sex to this chapter, to oh this week? Oh, my God. I mean, oh God. I would have Matt and Aludra bone so hard that Tuan leaves to... him and never speaks to him again. Yeah, 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 yeah. They need to, like, fuck. So Tuan is like, oh, wait, you're not interested in me. I, the, we can stop this weird fucking bullshit. I'm not going to marry you. The, one of the problems with Tuan is that the perfect person for Matt is right there. Yeah. Alutra she, is like, the perfect partner. She's got big old titties. <laughs> got big old titties. She's perfect she's for him. She's smart. She's like very interesting, but she also knows how to tease him and like not give in to him right away. Yeah. Aludra is his perfect partner and she's right there. 
Yeah. Very yeah. unfortunate. And he just, he can't see it. It's so sad. Oh, the smut corner we don't have to add. Randon min fucking and Matt watching. <laughs> I mean, he tries not to watch, you know? He's like a good he friend. He tries, He's but, like, uh, mm. I, you know what? I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be watching this. I really would rather not. <laughs> Holy shit, wait, uh, huge update, Car Karn has caught up and is only behind by 1%. Oh my god, I feel like the 2020 election, when it seemed like Trump won at first, but he definitely didn't, because <laughs> you have to count all the votes. Yes. Guys, Kara Karn, Kara Karn, Kara uh, Karn, here we yeah. go, Kara Karn, fuck Bella, Kara Karn, fuck no, Bella, No, don't Cara. do that, that's god bestiality, we don't. It lost, a, it lost a point. No, people are voting for Bella, probably. No! No! <laughs> God damn it. This is a disaster. Yeah, I wish that Eludra and Matt ended up together. They they would, uh, they, they'd, they'd fuck real good. Matt's they'd perfect partner good. is Elaine. Sir Jimris, Elaine is married to Avienda. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't work. That, that's not how this goes. Stop the count. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. There's going to be election denialists that say Kara Karn shouldn't have won because <laughs> Bella was clearly winning in the beginning. Clearly. Obviously, it has nothing to we'll do with the number We'll have our own January 6th. Oh my god, over our fucking car. You know who else I think is fucking? Uh, Kurgan and um, Orchid Eater says, hey, I found this. I think this is yours. Eh? I don't know what that means. Orchid Eater, I, I don't get it. It's a membership. Thank hey, you for joining, but I don't know what you. that means. <laughs> I found this. I think this is it's, yours. It's our membership. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's your membership too. Thank us. you for giving it back to us, kind yeah. of. That's how that works, right? Oscars are this weekend, and I'm stoked for everything everywhere all at once. Me too. I hope Michelle Yeoh uh, wins. Yeah. I also She's hope perfect. Kiki Kwan wins. Uh, I want him to get that award because I think his speech will be fucking rad. I uh, yeah. I I might actually watch like just. That. It's tied. Oh my god! At 202 votes in, guys. Kara Karn. Kara Karn. This is your own fault. Kara Karn. I'm having fun now. This is rad. Kara Karn. Kara <laughs> Karn. Oh, wait. I have other YouTube accounts. Oh, my God. Are you serious? So have I voted at all? I don't think you can vote because you made okay, the okay, poll. Okay, okay, okay. But I have if other you YouTube go accounts. to your other accounts, you can I have other probably. accounts. Kara Karn's going to win. I'm, I'm cheating it. This is why this is, this is why people are, say it's rigged, you know? You're sowing dissent. Boom. This is voter fraud. You can't vote more than one. My iPad account. Give me a sec. Oh, my God. Give me a sec. <laughs> wow, Nerdy really doesn't want the car to be named Bella. I think it's a weird name for a car. All right. My dog was named Bella, so. That's why it's a weird name for their car. <laughs> Fair enough. You know what? Car Karn is, is pretty funny. Yes! Is no! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Guys, everyone's on the edge of their seats. <laughs> In incredible. What a race, y'all. What a I get two race. votes. I get two votes. Sure. Oh, my God. Well, we, we can't end tied, so we got to keep streaming. This will be the longest podcast because we can't end tied. That's true. Okay. We cannot. It's 3131. Yeah. The next one to have a point ahead, we stop. The next time one of them is ahead. Are you sure you want to say that? No! <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's a terrible idea. No! Bella wins. Fuck. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. I mean, here between the two of us, I think we have like twelve YouTube accounts. To be fair. No, Bella wins. I end the poll. What? I ended the poll. No. Bella has thirty-one percent of the vote. I didn't vote. Kara Karn has thirty percent. No. The Wagonborn has twenty-two. I call a recount. Recount. Okay, what if next week we start with a runoff between just Bella and Kara Karn? To start the podcast next week, we will do Bella versus Kara Karn. And you will all have all week in the Discord to convince everyone to vote with you. UK, you have we you have a week to debate in the Discord to fight for your name choice. Yeah. So next week at the beginning of the podcast, we're going to throw up the Kara Karn versus Bella debate, and it will be live for the entire podcast. And then at the end of the pod next week, the we'll whole decide. Podcast. Yeah, because okay. people come and go. Not everyone can be there right at the end. Okay. So at the, at the beginning next week, we will have Kara Karn and Bella be the two choices, and it will run the entire podcast. And at the end, we will see who wins. A runoff seems appropriate. Yeah. That seems fair, right? That way, yeah. that way, the people who like have work and stuff and can't stay all the way to the end, they can vote. And the, the Europeans the who go to bed because it's like th five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. No one had fifty percent, guys. We need a majority. This is a democracy. So next week, Kara Karn v Bella. In the poll, mm -hmm. um, tell people to vote. 
Uh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> One wild card candidate? No, we had the wild cards. If, the wagon reborn was the wild card. If someone, win. if someone can impress us in the Discord with a third option, we will consider it. Okay. How's that? How's okay. That? Y'all, thank you so much for uh, and in another incredible book club. Y'all. Um. Do something nerdy tonight. <laughs> also, a huge thanks to Armats. You guys crushed it today, like always. Yes. I know people are talking about Attack on Titan again. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's my bad. I have salty hot takes. Or Bahubali. People just don't like Bahubali. our reactions to things. It's, it's fine. 8 p.m. in Europe? Wow, I really can't do math. Maybe some people go to bed at 